Welcome to a long-awaited episode of Scenario. Um, well, you all got some bonus content so this week. So is anybody still listening? I don't know. No, no. We had, like like I told you before, oh, we got yes. some. You know, get your ass kicked. Um, you know, emails. Uh, where where y'all at? I got I go to work with y'all on certain days. In case you forgot, I'm I'm Matt White now. <laughs> I'm Daryl Frierson. <laughs> So we, we're finally back. We're um, the long lost lead singers yeah. of Cain and Abel. <laughs> Mentioning Cain and Abel, let's, let's get right into this. Um, I did a long deep dive. I don't know. I was sitting on the couch and something made me. I don't know how I got into the no limit. Hole. The Lord came down. Maybe. And I was like, no, you know what? No, it's actually your fault because you had texted me about something. And I don't know, for some reason, I went into a No Limit hole mm-hmm. and started just, like, Googling No Limit uh, albums. And so I went to the discography of No Limit. If you associate me with No Limit, I'm more than happy to be that guy. You, you did the right thing. You said you didn't do the right You did the right thing then, you said. Yeah. You, yeah, you look I came right. into your life like a, like, like, what was that show with Della Reese? <laughs> touched by an angel. Touched by, <laughs> touched by, I was touched by a ratchet angel. Ah, that fool said touched by an angel. You couldn't make a show called Touched by Anything these days. Oh, You'd no, be in trouble. no, no. It's just got to be called Angel. Yeah. And they already had a show called Angel from uh, the spinoff of Buffy. It'd be like Angel <laughs> Encounters or something. Yeah. And even would. that's a little risque. Ain't no touch by Angel or nothing like that. Can't get touched by nothing. So, no, enough. I did a deep dive, man. Because I started like, man, like, when did I really know about No Limit and, like, things like that? And, like, what were some of the people, random people? So, I deep dive. What was the first No Limit song that you ever heard that moved, uh, that Bowdy. moved you? Yeah. About is the first song I heard from No Limit, period. Yeah. The first out, period, the first thing I ever heard was Ice Cream Man, period. Mm-hmm. And it was, i never forget, I was a freshman in high school in 95, and um, maybe, no, it might have been sophomore year, 96. Yeah, it had to be 96, because Ice Cream Man came out in 96. And what really got me, it wasn't I'm about it really that really got me, it was Break Em Off something. And I was in an uh, older cat from, uh, actually from U-City, older cat picked us up for his party, and I was like... Dun, dun. I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is, who is this dude on on here? And then I heard Pimp C. Obviously, I knew who UGK was at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Pimp C, bitch. Whoa, what, whoa, what, what is this? What is this? And then, dun, 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 the ice cream man. Dun, 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 you see, dun. the first thing that I heard, well, not the first, I can't remember the exact chronological order. It's been too long. Yeah. But was the uh, Tupac joint. Was the uh, was Master P Tupac tribute? That's way later though. So you didn't get No Limit till then? No, 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 no. I'm just talking about. No, I heard Ice Cream Man in like '97. Okay, so you heard it a year after that. Yeah, but I was talking about the first time I really just tripped off because like I'd heard that, but that sounded completely different though. It's more like the uh, yeah. I know you're talking about the on the West Coast Bad Boys. Yeah. Um, so that was '97. So you you missed the the uh, the first Took the Shocker album. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we had all of that. I'm just saying, like well, you were like, okay, I really kind of. I was like, hey, these dudes gonna go. I thought it was just <laughs> shit that we was just had for a little while. You thought it was, I was, you like, thought it was an in and out thing. Yeah. And then I was like, Cain and Abel, and then I was like, I got into Cain and Abel, mentioning them, and I forgot all about the great Moby Dick on hooks, <laughs> on Gangstified. I was like, man, they did have a little run, man, for a second. Mm-hmm. So then I go through '97. They had a decent year. Some albums in there, mystical drop. No, see, West Coast Bad Boys too was ninety seven, was January ninety seven. So that's right at the same time. Yeah, but I'm saying, but I mean, you, but I'm saying, if those, if the, you already missed Kane and Abel, Skull Duggery, Silk, and Master P. Well, but I'm just that. saying that, like, I'm not saying, but I'm about it came out in May of ninety seven, and and I'd already heard Ice Cream Man in ninety six. Right. So and it was a longer turnaround time then too. Yeah, it wasn't as easy just yeah. to get albums. It wasn't like I could get turn on Spotify in ninety seven. <laughs> get his grab it. Yeah. So and like I'm about, I bought I'm about it on VHS. Yeah, I'm hearing all of this in real time because Ice Cream Man came out in ninety in ninety six. Yeah, it came out fall yeah. of like ninety six. Yeah, I'm good because that was I was in like sixth grade. Yeah, it was like fall ninety six. I don't know why I was listening to Mr. Ice Cream Man in sixth grade. Well, because I was listening. No, to No, it had to be you had to be in seventh grade, right? Nah, fall not, of 96? Fall not, of 96? Not in April of 96. Oh, well, I didn't hear it till fall of 96. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I heard it. Because there's a time warp once again. I heard it in the summer of like 96. So okay. I was like, so there's still like, a time warp where you don't, you got time where like kids don't understand. It took you some time to discover music. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I wasn't listening to, like, 99 Ways to Die then. That came out, like, 95. Yeah, I was just still listening to Tupac and Outkast. I mean, I heard yeah. cats, then I heard cats playing the ghetto trying to kill me a lot. Yeah. That was, like, a little joint that people... But then 98 happens. This is where I'm like, God, P was just like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. 
They came out with 23 albums in two, in 1998. That's two albums a month, people, if you know how to do your mathematics. <laughs> I mean, god damn, man. There's, is there, and there's someone that has all of these. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of No Limit album covers in my mom's basement. So did you ever go the full... Tr- uh, I got one every week for the, as long as I. So can you remember. got all the ones in ninety eight at one point. Like so, you got all. We will name the albums. Name them while uh, they came Young out in ninety eight. My balls, my world. No, nah, I don't have that. I I've heard. Yeah, what's your call I've, there? I've, you do that there on there. I've heard them, but I didn't need. I didn't need that whole album for that. Yeah, though. right, right, right. We had that on like because you got to remember we had like mixtapes and we had mix CDs and, and stuff how you, too. Did how you do that? There end up being on something else, like on a soundtrack or something. Did it end up being on? I'm about it. Soundtrack. How you do that? There was on. Um, it was only. Was it only on Young Bleeds album? No, nah, it was. Because it was. Yeah, it was on. I'm about it. Uh, it was on. I'm about it. So you could get it off of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. It was on there too. Then Silk the Shocker charts to the game. I had that. Oh, God, was like, fuck yeah, I had that. See, see murder, life or death. Absolutely. I said, I see murder. That's the murder album was pretty dope. Yes. That life or death was pretty dope. Absolutely. I got the hook up. Yes. Uh, Sons of Funk. Uh, yeah, hell yeah! I was first trying to get in the game with that. <laughs> That's when you're your arm, your first push it, I had pushing inside of you on it. <laughs> hell hey, yeah! Hey, people finna be bugging out on this. Hold up! I was trying to figure the game out. Theme that t- there's one oh, in every family. Oh yeah! Nick, hell yeah! Nick, Soldier Slim. Yes. Give it to him raw. Yes. Massive P M P the last dime. Yes. Cain and Abel and my and my brother my brother's keeper. Yes. Um. Damn, I Mac Shell Shock. I was spinning. Yeah, hell yeah. Mac was Mac was a Mac, Mac Shell Shock was a shit. Yeah, Mac is a. Hold on, this is when did uh when did Ghetto Dope come out? Ghetto Dope. So it came out way before that. Yeah, okay, because I know I had Ghetto Dope. I had Ghetto Dope when I was fresh. I had Ghetto Dope in eighth grade. Yeah, that's ninety seven. Okay. Um, then uh, Snoop Dogg, the game is to be sold, not to be told. Yeah, they had Wolf motherfucker on it. Yep, and that shit not. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ed, the assassin. I heard Big Ed a lot. I never had it though. See, this is one of those. I remember the album cover, but I never, don't remember anybody. That's Where was I getting the money for all these albums every Tuesday? We didn't have a lot. Think about it, you ain't got you ain't paying no rent. Yeah, but I still had to. I still had. Dude, to. It wasn't hard. To, I mean, I wouldn't say it wasn't hard, but twenty dollars once a month if you really was only fucking with no limit. I had to pay for for lunch. Yep. I had to see. I wasn't trying to juice. My my folks for stuff right. like that. See, because we had just came back into money around ninety eight. Because we <laughs> ain't had a, no money. You, you wanted, you wanted throughout the early nineties until the late nineties, that shit kind of sucked a little bit. <laughs> so, and it didn't suck it, it, because of, I was so young. It didn't suck for me as much as I bet it sucked <laughs> in the, for like in the bigger picture. Yeah. So. Because um, you're not as conscious of my, yeah, I, mean, I was just like, I right, bet I, I, I don't even know what I wasn't doing, you know what I mean? This but is what it is. yeah, but I mean, it's like, but like right around '97, '98 is when my old dude got the job down at the Marriott, and money started rolling in. <laughs> so maybe and, and, I was, and people understand, but I always, black families always, and back in the day, black families always had that story when Chris got that job at the at the uh, at the factory. Absolutely. It changed everybody's lives. Here's the thing. Because here's the thing. My mom definitely wasn't going to be giving me money to go buy albums every week. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't going to happen. And then I was probably trying to wait to uh, to juice my old dude to try to buy me some J's once I realized we could afford that. So I don't know where these ten dollars and stuff was coming. It's probably us pooling our money together because we and used to share an album. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because There's a lot of sharing albums. Yeah, yeah. Because we also use album trading. Album yep. swapping, yep. Album you know. swapping. Yeah, so I mean, we um, because we used to pull pull together a lot of our money to get rice and stuff like that too. So yeah, I don't know. So we got that was before cars. That was before we was into cars and having to get gas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You didn't have any yeah. any straight bills. Yeah, that's wow, wow. Let's bring that back. <laughs> bring '96 back for me. Yeah. <laughs> Big Ed is dead though too. Big Ed is dead. I did not know that. I just, I just, oh, rest in peace to Big Ed. He died Big in two thousand one. And I was like, what? I was like, man, his career fell off, and it was in two thousand one. So that's obviously three years later. You died throat cancer. Then that's why your career is uh, gone. Uh, Skull Duggery, these wicked streets. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I is had that, that the for one a while. that's got uh the one the one party song on it? Everybody like head knee, head knees and toes. Is it something like that? Um, I. Don't remember. So there's a lot of songs I don't remember yeah. the names of from like from. All right, Magic back. Skies and Limit. Um, no, I didn't have that. That was a, people like Magic though. 
Yeah, I, I know. I just know I didn't have it personally. But. Shout out to the big body headbangers with him. And, uh, he started the group with him and Roy Jones and Chopper. Yeah, <laughs> body head records. That's what I said, body. <laughs> and they had a uh, look. If, if y'all don't, if you if y'all young as don't remember, you go look up. I smoke, I drink. Mm-hmm. Even though Roy's whole verse is about how he doesn't smoke and drink, so I don't understand why the song is called "I Smoke, I Drink." But Roy starts his verse out, "I don't smoke, I don't drink." So why are you on this song, Roy? <laughs> is he, but he said Roy gets head. That's what I do. Yes, I bet Roy Jones was running Texas, but I mean running like Florida. Florida. Oh, Pensacola, you know it. All that panhandle was his. Roy Jones had one of the foremost fades. Of the, of the 90s yes. and 2000s. Yeah, Destin, Pensacola, mm-hmm. Tallahassee, probably all the way to Jacksonville. That whole panhandle probably was running it. Mm-hmm. Um, mean Green? No. I think we started to get to the point where... But that Mean Green had one of the best songs they ever came out with, though. Uh, if it don't change, ching, if it ain't a real soldier. Major Players. That's it. That's my joint off that Mean Green. See, that's not in my time. I love that's that. That's not major. in my It's so player time. and like just smooth. That major player. Uh, prime suspects. Guilty to prove it. So we just talked about that. The oh, names man. of these yeah. groups, is when you look back at it, it's like It's just crazy. ridiculous. So you had prime suspects, right? No. You didn't. So this is this is the end of 98. So this is where No Limit is starting to fall off at about. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. They started Well, because the, there's a couple. There's a mystical album that you ain't named yet that I had for Ghetto sure. Ghetto Fabulous. Ghetto. It's the, end of, it's the end of this year. What was what was Mystical's no, nah, what was Mystical's first no limit album? Okay. Then you then you started after that then because we did Yeah, no no, that. I started for ninety eight. The Mystical's album is the end of ninety eight. So a lot of the albums I was buying was ninety seven, ninety eight. Through ninety eight. So you 97 had a year, through ninety eight. Ca- not a calendar year, because but year. right around right now, four hundred degrees is out. Mm, and okay. starting the shift starts. Shift starts to some more And control. right about now, Volume two is coming out too, oh, and you got and, DMX, and it's dark and hell is hot. Yep, yeah, yep. So this end of nineties breakdown of hip hip hop albums brought to you in part by. <laughs> well, no, no, I got a couple more. We ain't done with the, the letter T for we throwback. We ain't done with no limit. Uh, Gambino family. No, we see, you're past all the albums that Mia I was X, buying. Mama drama. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Because Mia X is a cl- definitely had that. A ghetto commission. <laughs> who who? That's that's <laughs> that's the name of the group. Yeah. Nah, we're done. <laughs> Okay. Done. So fully blooded. I probably didn't get another one out right until the true album came out. The, the second true album. The the crime family ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't get the silk shark, the made men, made man. After that, sea murder, Bossolini. Oh, I had Bossolini. You had Moby Dick, Gangsta Harmony. Uh uh-uh. uh I didn't have. I know some. So you had a. Do you have Snoop Dogg's No Limit, Top Dog? Not heard it, but I didn't have it. I think. See, I. You did. got last meal. You went back. You got last meal. See, at, at that point, at that point. I was starting to drive at this point, so money for some shit like that was going. <laughs> now you were really gas. making decisions. Yeah, now I was having to make pimp decisions at this point. <laughs> so yeah, how you far away? We're in though. How the, far away does she? I never got it, but I heard it. Um, it, everybody listened to that because it had been coming soon for so long. Yes, and we saw the cover. Yeah, for so long. Yeah, had that thing on her. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So and, that, and people, if y'all know the uh, now you get into like two thousand when like Rough Riders album was yep. out and so Rough Riders. And, yep. You, you, uh, AT Aliens and all of that stuff was what? What? Yep. Outcast album was okay, out right about ninety eight is the year is when uh, uh, when Equimini oh, came out. Equimini, all, all ninety eight. Yeah, okay. That ran all the way to yeah, two thousand. Yeah. So now you're starting to get into like a whole bunch of we were listening to like a bunch of other stuff. Little too. Italy. Jay, I remember Little Italy album. Did you get, you, did you get that? No, because mm-hmm. I was at that point. At well, that first point, of all, how do you name yourself Little Italy? <laughs> out of Louisiana. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but I'm just saying. Uh, so that was the downfall of them is around in yeah. 98, right? Yeah. Like, because also around this time is when uh is when Chopper City in the ghetto came out. Yeah. You, you had uh you had uh, uh What's BG's first is that BG's first album? Yeah. yeah. And you had um uh what was the Hot Boys second album? Um Gorilla Warfare. Gorilla Warfare. When Gorilla Warfare came out, we was kinda like, Yeah, we rocking with these and cats. Was it four four hundred degrees really kinda put the nail in the coffin, right? Four hundred degrees came out first. Though. That's what I'm saying. That put really put the nail in the coffin. No, nah, that started it. It was the first. It was the first. It was the first other album that came up the road that far from Louisiana. Because man, P, P did something that Cash Money couldn't do, and I want to see if you could think feature wise that Juvenile did with that four hundred degrees album that P tried to do on with Mia X. What are you doing? You talking he about got, he, he got an East Coast artist. Well, yeah, he had that terrible ass Jay Z verse on the back end of right. the remix. But, but 
people look, but that was Jay Z. Yeah, I mean, Jay Z touched it at that point. It was gold. You, and know you gotta think, saying? but he tried it with Foxy Brown on the Mia X joint. Yeah, it's just that he didn't get the artist that would have kind of really opened up your. That was Jay Z. Jay Z was just doing the just doing the job. Then he was just like, yep. I'm gonna do whatever. Now, if she that if they got Lil Kim on it, it might have opened it up a little bit more for them at that time. Who knows? But Lil Kim was hot. Yeah. Well, man, let's get to our yeah, emails. Let's get, let's we've been we've been avoiding <laughs> we've been avoiding long enough. We, I, was we giving credit to New Orleans because New Orleans is about to get mad at us? Uh, I mean, do we want to save these emails for uh, the next uh, round? No, nah, man, we can do we them right here. It's, it's, it's a it's a it's a. It's a uh, I mean, we can we can reiterate them. Okay, we just, for those people that well, no, let's save our football emails we'll because do those the, people that listen to that. They they're probably they listen to that. They listen to this. Yeah, that's but, true too. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it's titled the same. It's just a. Yeah, uh, this is the juvenile. That's the juvenile. I mean, that's the Jay Z remix episode over there. Um, this one is from uh, Indy. He says, or she, I'm not sure who it was. This says, "When y'all coming back with a show? God damn, man! <laughs> that's all the email is. That's all it is." Well, okay. here you, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> oh. Yeah, here we are. See, here's the thing. I, now, I'm gonna tell you this right now. We've been putting this off and putting it out there. But the reasons why there haven't been shows the last few weeks are going to be reasons that y'all really going to appreciate. Exactly. <laughs> like, y'all are really going to appreciate this. We're getting some old bands back together. We got new projects that are coming up. No limit. <laughs> there's, like, there's about to be, like, a whole, a whole, whole thing coming that's about to happen soon that's, yeah, that, like, we're about to go outcast. I'm just going to say it like this. And I'll come back around and say it later on. We get ready to be like Dre and Big Boy. <laughs> there we go. Like, just so you can understand what it's going to look like when it takes place. We're about to be like Dre and Big Boy. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to make albums. We're going to still make albums. Yeah. But. <laughs> you, be clear with that. Yeah. Yeah. We gonna, it's going to be like that. You're going to appreciate it. Maybe like UGK. UGK kept on rocking with each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, until the untimely demise of. Um, Eventually, the whole thing going to look like Wu-Tang, though. Yeah. Shout out to the Wu Tang TV show, which is awesome. Is Low Cash kind of like Wu Tang now? Yeah, it definitely is. There's so many different. I don't know if I like that because that makes me like Capadonna. Why would it make you Capadonna? Because because you more like Redman. No, nah, I don't want to be Redman though. Why not? Because I'm clearly at this point. I mean, it's... yeah, but Redman is on. He was on the last Wu Tang album like three or four times. No, nah, I get that though. But I mean, but at the end of the day, when you talk about Wu Tang, you still don't talk about Redman. Some people think Redman was in Wu Tang. Yeah, that's their fault. <laughs> That's exactly why. You said that's at you best, said. at best, I'll be Johnny Gill or Low Cash. Okay, okay, that's a better comparison. I think that's a that's fair. A, that's a fair, fair that, comparison. That's a much better one. <laughs> uh, as I, as I do, that means we about to do the home again tour soon. Oh shit, that's we can't have that. We gonna be shooting at each that's other. A, <laughs> <laughs> that's coming soon. Coke, all we'll talk about that at the end of the uh, show. As we mentioned that, I, I, I revisited now the great Master P joint about that. Uh, <laughs> Bentley's and Hummus, little daddy. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I'm seeing the Master P dance. Shout out to my boy Jeremiah that was on here. He used to do that dance, the actual Master P dance from about that mm-hmm. at our parties to make fun of uh, uh, Master P. I, uh, <laughs> I don't drink Hennessy anymore. It doesn't seem like it's a good investment in my peace <laughs> and sanity. Oh, yes. But before this, no, before this Master P concert, I'm definitely, a, I'm, either drinking some, I'm either drinking some Hennessy or some Alizé. Ooh, I'm going to dust off the Alize. I told, I remember I showed you that picture, and it was dusty on that Alize. If that uh, schnooks, <laughs> that Alize looked like it's that Alize looked like it's in that Thriller video. <laughs> it was like, damn, and it was like twenty five dollars, like for the for the big bottle. Like Alize, probably the thing I've gone the longest in my life in between drinking. Yeah, I've had Alize, dude. I think, like, I think I've had Alize since I've been legally able to drink. I don't think I've, I don't, yeah, I, know. I drink it underage. Yeah, I don't think I've drank it. I don't think I've drank Alize in nineteen years. I can actually think back to the last time I drank Alize. Yeah, it's before last time I drank Alize. It actually did something to me. <laughs> like there's actually something that happened to you. Yeah, like I was. Yeah, it's like nineteen years ago. I was, was it the passion fruit one or was it the? I don't remember. The it, was a, it was in a sprite bottle in an assembly. Oh shit. Oh, this is in high school. Yeah. Oh shit, you, y'all was wilding. <laughs> uh, man, let's jump in our topics, man. <laughs> All right, man. So uh, it's been a little while. So we got a couple of things that we need to touch up on. Just to let you know we haven't lost touch with who we are. Yes. Uh, number one, w- w- important things that must be discussed: um, chicken sandwich wars update. Oh, all right. Um, so KFC has jumped in full force. Yes. Uh, they have the Impossible Chicken, basically, they're calling it. Something like that, yeah. Where it's not real chicken they, they've got it. They've got Impossible Chicken. It's like T 
tenders or like nuggets yeah. or something on top of on a bun, and you can get a bun on it. Yeah, yeah. but they've also have got. Jack in the Box jumped in too. Yeah, with the triple. With the triple and the double chicken sandwich. <laughs> Bro, you eat a, tri- a triple chicken sandwich. And, they, and they, that motherfucker throw cheese on each level. If you eat a triple chicken sandwich, you're going to come out three shades darker than when you started. <laughs> Don't matter what race you are. Doesn't either. matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and then um, Chick fil A is officially put on the war with the mac and cheese they're actually putting it on commercials yeah it's out there out there now it's out there like yo we're pushing it's on the rewards thing now I had to look I've got 600 Chick-fil-A rewards points you're thinking about using it for the mac and cheese no I'm not because I don't rock with mac and cheese especially from a fast fast food spot but I no, I was holding out to get the spicy sandwich. Okay. Like, and now I'm at the spicy sandwich, but I see I can also get a lemonade for a few less points. So I want to see if maybe I want to hang. I never get the lemonade. I haven't had it like twice. Yeah. But, but it's good. It's good. But getting that, I could get a regular sandwich for less points, keep a few points, and get the lemonade. Yeah. There you go. I'm There's buttering something. like it's '97 again. <laughs> see. That's them. That's, that's what I was spending my money on in '97. I was going to the corner store getting and, and getting chips. chips back when they was twenty five cents. Oh, and you could y'all could come up there. So I had like two dollars, or, or you can get four four dollars. All the homies, like I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab all these Doritos for everybody. You grab the drink, the vest for thirty five cents each for the little can of vest. See, nah, we see, I was, I was, I was going straight for the food. So I would get, I would get two or three chips, mm-hmm. and then get the rest of it on Laffy Taffy. <laughs> oh, you just get, you just put the three chips up there. And then put a certain amount of money and say the rest on Laffy Taffy. Yeah, and then I'd have to buy like a black and mild for whatever OG was outside <laughs> who just didn't want to walk <laughs> around the corner to go. To didn't, get a single. Who literally didn't want to stand up in front of the corner store and go in and get something to smoke. Yeah. That's real, though. That's yeah. real. That's exactly what. Or a pack of cigarettes. Grab this. Grab me this black and mild. Like, and you keep the rest. And dude, like, straight up was what selling you it. $5? Like, and that was the neighborhood back then, though. Like, they would sell it to you because they knew it was just going, like, right there. And they knew who it was. Yeah. They know this for Anthony? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, or Tank, you know, because when you didn't go by Anthony, no, probably no, it's no, a nickname yeah. Tank. Yeah. Um, yeah, but shout out to uh, them. With this this for money. black. Yeah, a neighborhood full of black people, but somebody nicknamed Black. You know that say something about him. Yep, he black, real black, Look, hood black. They, they couldn't, man. That's why the FBI and CIA fucked up by not really going after hiring the correct black people for their organizations. They could have got it done the right way. Oh, they could have got it done if they wouldn't have been so racist and fucked up. Mm-hmm. They could have got this done the right way. How many things could we've got done the right way if more people wasn't racist? Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole topic in itself. To to be fair, yeah. Um. But the chicken wars are coming up. Popeyes has the bring your own button. Is it bring your own button still popping with them? I haven't. I never participated in such yeah. shenanigans. I mean, you don't ask me to bring food to a place where I'm trying to pick up some food. I probably wouldn't be coming here if yeah. I had some food. Because I'm, I'm just trying to come through to grab me something because I'm too lazy to cook at home or too lazy at work to bring my lunch. Like, I just don't want to. Yeah, like, I just don't feel like doing this. Like, where am I at work with a roll of buns and some pickles? <laughs> I wonder how many gigs though they did have that situation. They was all gone though. There was a Popeyes in the vicinity. See, uh, but yeah, shout out to uh, the Chicken Wars. We will keep you updated as new developments happen on the Chicken War side. Who's winning right now? What are the Chicken What are the Chicken War chicken power War rankings War. right now? Chicken for Chick Fil A still winning because they didn't have to tap. They didn't have to tap, and they 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 withstood the storm. Popeyes did, Popeyes had their foot on their neck, mm-hmm. but Chick Fil A is like we're just gonna keep our shit moving. We're just gonna stay steady. They gonna have their shit going on for a minute, but they'll fall off. And we'll still be here. We'll still be here. Respect, Except man. Except on Sunday. Respect, man. No. <laughs> on Sundays. You go see them on Sunday. Yeah. Well, right. right. If you need it that bad. All right, man. To, uh, uh, now, if, the, if they need to get on early on it, you know you have they had the turkey. You talked about that, right? They got the Popeye's turkey. Right? Oh, yeah. I'm getting that this year. Yeah, you, you had it before, didn't you? No, I missed it. Right. You missed it. You tried to go get it, and it was sold out. Yeah, I'm going to go get it this year. If, uh, if they're smart, they should double up now on the turkeys right now production. So the Popeye's, so the Popeyes Cajun turkey is out there. It's like $20 with some mm-hmm. other stuff on it. Yeah, you get a full little feast over yeah. the family. I'm going to get that full little feast for me. <laughs> I'm not for, telling nobody to, I got to, it. To, to sell you over for that, uh, that holiday week before the... For that Friday. Because they're thinking you, you ain't got to go back to mom's and bring no plate on. No, nah, see, I have it here at my crib. Oh, you have Thanksgiving? So, I, I had it last year. I'll do it again if I need to. I don't know. I had it this year because it was like some, some construction or something going on. <laughs> and I know I'm going to have to have it next year, like forever. Yeah. By next year. Yeah. So, I mean, I might as well just keep things going. So, gonna keep, so the Popeye's thing is going to be like your little... It's going to be mine, yes. And like... Y'all I bring it in after everybody's gone. I might have to buy it early 
and take it somewhere else. And put it in another refrigerator. I might put it in my refrigerator at work. <laughs> and then go pick it up. Uh, on that Friday with your, with your key and go in and, yeah. get it and go back home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that, real. That might be the play. All right, man. So it's time to get into the yeah. WTFW of the Let's week. Go. And this one, man, this one caught me off guard. Like I, I But I appreciate it. Though. And I immediately like went into like a daze trying to figure this out that I don't know if this is just happening here or if this is happening <laughs> everywhere. If it's just happening in St. Louis. It's it's very fitting if it's just St. Louis. It it would be one of the most on brand things <laughs> ever happened in St. Louis. Um so it was reported here in the Riverfront Times, which is a local paper in the St. Louis area, that White Castle is about to start selling beer. It's going to 400 restaurants, so I'm just looking it up. There might be 400 states. White Castles in, in St. Louis. <laughs> 13 states. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just looked it up. Yeah, but go ahead. So can you just imagine going to get in a Crave case and like three tall cans? Is that going to be like a value meal? Is he going to be able to like be like, instead of that drink, let me get that Tall can. And then for an extra fifty cent for the, uh, it's, they said they're gonna be draft on draft. Draft. They gonna. Yeah. That's what it's saying here. The first beer will be a kalosh. Ah, see, they trying to keep Negroes out. Mm. The kalosh, the kalosh, You know, see, see the first beer, the kalosh from Wire Bacher Brewing Company. That's some German stuff. Yeah, Lark making it. Oh, it's gonna be a fruity beer. Oh, they got us back. Uh-oh. It's gonna be a fruity beer. Uh oh. I don't Uh-oh. want that. I don't want that. No, no, no. But the but women in the streets may want that. Women in the streets. Yes. Yes. Okay. Don't let them come up with a fruit punch. Hold up. This is new news for me. As we prepare to celebrate <laughs> our 100th birthday in 2021, White Castles is having a 100th birthday in 2021. Uh-huh. 1921. All right. Well, I'll tell you what that means. We gonna be there. I gotta eat 100 White Castles that year. <laughs> don't make it as a commemoration. So if that means you need to average two White Castles. A week, in theory. I usually eat four at a time when I eat, so you can but, probably but cut I that. Mean, I'll go spells where I won't get white castles like two or three months, though. Yeah. Well, so that means like, you got to go. I'm going to have to be dedicated, for sure. Yeah, I'm saying this going to be some dedication. So yeah. you have to at least do four every two weeks if you can do it like that. I can do that. I can do four white castles. I mean, it's only right to put yeah. down 100 castles for the 100. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when the beers are gonna drop. No, I don't know. They didn't say when the beers are gonna drop. I'm looking on this arm. I, don't, I but I'm gonna tell you right now. I think that drinking a fruity beer and some white capsules together might be one of the worst decisions you could possibly yeah, make. Your, oh, your stomach is fucked. Your guts are gonna climb out your mouth and move out your mouth if you're lucky. Might otherwise you. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't understand. What that. other terrible combinations could possibly happen at like a fast food place? Like, what would be like the thing that you would be like, nah? There ain't no way. Or something that's happened in fast food already where you've been like, that just flat ain't happening over oh, here. Oh, the double down from KFC. I my homeboy ate one of those. Yo, I ne- I just knew that it wasn't that wasn't for me. And that was, <laughs> my stomach was better. I was a young younger man then and I just knew I knew then that that would take some time off my life at the end of my life. I l- I had the foresight on that one. Yeah, like, yeah, if I had that double down You had to know. I'm gonna die two weeks earlier than I was supposed to if I hit this double down. I looked um I, I looked at some things and I said, um, you know what's not for me for me? That Arch Deluxe. Ooh, yeah. I know that, that, that Arch Deluxe had some type of sauce and like an artisan bun yeah, or something yeah, and like that little Deluxe. circular bacon. I got fired from McDonald's for selling Arch Deluxe though too. Wait, you wasn't supposed to be selling them? Well I had I made my own meal called the Players Meal. Oh God. I was in Chicago for the summer working at the McDonald's. The only job I've ever been fired from in my life. Um and I made uh it was two Arch Deluxes, two Cokes. For seven dollars. <laughs> Wait, where was was the money going in the register? No, of course not. <laughs> That's why you got fired. <laughs> it wasn't about the player meal. <laughs> no, I, no, somebody dimed me out because somebody came through the drive through, uh, asking for the players meal. This is in '98, asking for the players meal. And you weren't there. I wasn't there. And he's like, "What's the players meal?" Oh man, D gave me that. It's two Arch Deluxes, two uh, Cokes. I'm assuming because I show back up, and you know, and uh, like, I mean, if all those people have been fired, you know this situation. Hey, uh, Daryl, can I talk to you in the back? It was like, like the oh, end of the Godfather. Shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was, he, they was like, "So you didn't think about the players meal?" I was like, "You know what? I quit, man." It's like, "No, no, no, no. We just want to talk to you about it. no, no, no." I tried to help y'all out with some marketing ideas, and y'all wouldn't receive the two of as much as I thought y'all was. And I was like, "I'm out." I only had two weeks left in the summer staying in Chicago. I, I'm out. It ain't no. You, so you did that. You did that. That classy quit after you've been fired. Yeah, like I knew I was gonna get fired. I just, I'm just gonna save y'all the time, you know. Uh, and I'm gonna do it that time. But the thing was, they they kept promote. They promoted me in like three weeks. 
So here's the thing. Uh, it, uh, before we turn the corner on this mm-hmm. WTFW of the week, um, let's just hope that, that, that White Castles maybe doesn't bring this to St. Louis because this reminded me of a story that I forgot about the time that the dude stabbed a guy in the back of the head because he wouldn't let him drink his beer in White Castle. Ooh. So imagine if you are out here slanging that beer inside White Castles. Like the one down on market. And do, it, 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 do I have to consume this inside too? I can't get this in the drive through I'm assuming. I would hope not. I know you can't. No way. Unless you're in Louisiana. Or Illinois. Illinois, you can get uh, to-go cups? Mm-hmm. They drive through. They got drive through liquor stores in Illinois. No, but no, no, no. But this is going to be an open container if it's a draft. That's different. Mm-hmm. I think Louisiana is one Louisiana is one of the only Oklahoma, states. Oklahoma, you can. Oklahoma, you can too. Yeah. Like, you know, basically the, the drive through daiquiri spots. But here's the thing. If they do this, if White Castle starts selling beer, mm-hmm. you know Jack and the Boss going to start selling uh, whiskey. <laughs> Because they can't get, they can't, because they have a late night spot too. Jack in the like, Box ain't letting nobody get the one up on them. Jack in the Box is like the dude to see you rocking a new starter what coat. What kind of whiskey are they serving though? And then go buy his own starter coat. <laughs> are they double R? Are they good. selling double R? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Jack in the Box sitting in a, in a, in a commercial. He could, maybe they might start selling rum. They're going to have the captain walk in that motherfucker. <laughs> it's a captain and Jack together? <laughs> yes. Captain you- and. Captain and Jack of uh, Jack Daniels would be on well, brand. Well, you see, Jack and Coke got a commercial together now. Yeah, which is interesting because I thought those br- I thought that was like an embargo thing of like those brands not totally being associated, but somebody figured this out together. Well, eventually you realize when it's time to get the bag. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's better for us to, to, so, party to work together. together and market ourselves together. Exactly. Um, we'll all right, man. So uh, let's get into a little bit of uh, the, the the news real quick here. Let's uh, go back to this because this is something I saw that. Uh, Let's say it, 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 it bothered me because of the potential it could have been, but then it never quite lived up to what it could have been. Uh, so, you know, the free the nipple movement has been <laughs> has been everywhere. You know, it's been a thing that people have been talking about, you know, and you know what? Honestly, I, I believe in it. I believe in it. I think that that should be a thing. Why are you still telling people that they can't be themselves in public and be in all their glory? Yeah, I mean. Like, what is this all about? However, <laughs> there's always somebody. There's always like a side to it that makes me feel like, uh, well, maybe we could forego it there. So there have been a series of states that has said, hey, yeah, we're going to let you do it. you out here. we free in the nipple. Have at it. And it's all of the worst states possible. <laughs> Every last possible worst. So now, this started in Colorado. Colorado City, this is according to the New York Post, Colorado mm-hmm. City's decision to discontinue a legal battle to bar women from appearing topless in public has effectively legalized the risque fashion statement in six western states. So I was like, oh, this is lit if it's California, Nevada, Nevada Arizona, all of that. I'm like, it's on. It's about the Hawaii. Yeah, it's, it's about to get popping. Washington, popular. you thought it's popping. However... <laughs> The uh, the the states that participated in this are uh, Colorado, okay. Kansas, oh. New Mexico, Ooh. Oklahoma, Ooh. Utah. And First the, of all, and, I'm surprised that you got half the states Mormon, so they ain't gonna even do it anyway. And the great state of Wyoming. So states that nobody gives a fuck about, except Colorado. Man. I've been to three of these places. <laughs> I've been to all of them. I can't say that they were anywhere close to the best time of my life. No, at all, I've been to every one of those. And like, so what's the average rating in that state? So if more. you put all of them together, what's the average rating? Of what, the women? Yes. 4.5? 4.5. Yeah. That means you got to have, if that's an average, that means you got some, like, some ones and some twos in there. Mm-hmm. Who's, what's it looking like up in Wyoming? I feel like Wyoming would be a place where you can get some sneaky badness. No, no, no. On the campus, like University of Wyoming, they got some little baddies on the campus. I saw that when when we played, when Mizzou played them (laughs) earlier this year. But that's it. And a little bit in Cheyenne, maybe a little bit too. Um, But a lot of people from Cheyenne, they'll come. The the, the interesting thing is that uh, Fort Laramie, where Wyoming is, only 30, 40 minutes from Fort uh, Fort Collins in Colorado. So people come down from there and kick it down at Fort Collins. Fort Collins is the biggest college town. Mm-hmm. So that'll, you know what I'm saying, they kind of get a mix because cause your, your, your best crop may be leaving and transplanting to Fort Collins on the weekends. Okay. That's, that's the problem you run into. So you, you're losing your talent because it don't want to be there. Fort Collins to kick it. Ah. So Wyoming is bad. I mean, Wyoming is probably the worst of all of them. 
Utah is bad. I'm surprised I would not get in on that. That seems like something uh, that I would, would be a part of. Yeah, maybe but they've been getting a little bit more conservative lately. Maybe Nebraska, you know. Nebraska would actually be on tier with Wyoming for those None, The Dakotas. Except for the East. This funny. Eastern Nebraska has got that fire on the low. Oh, yeah, I've been there. But the rest of the, the if you There's have to get out that stuff. that eighty mile radius of right in the that eastern board, this you might as, they might as well start their own city state if they wanted to, <laughs> and just become their own Omaha, Nebraska, their own <laughs> state. <laughs> they just bring Council Bluffs in too on the Iowa side, make it their own country. The <laughs> only th- the reason I think that that folks even know Nebraska's there is because of the football team. Yeah, and Gabrielle Union. I had to remember that she was from there. Yeah, she's from there. Yeah, I didn't remember that until college game day on Saturday. Yeah, shout out to my, my boy D. Um, his uh, he went to high school with. Her. I mean, did he kick the way he was cool? She was cool. They kicked it all the time. He's cool with her still. Is that like the ultimate? Damn, she wasn't as bad in high school as she is. No, right? he said she was bad then. So I mean, yeah. So he wasn't. He's like, then he's like, there's no fall off. Did he shoot the jumper? Or? Yeah, he's like, no. Nah. He's like, she, 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 she knew her destiny and where she was going. He ah, said, so she wasn't even getting tired. No, he said she already knew. She already, he, like, everybody already knew what was up. Like, she was like one of the people that was born. I'm, yeah, and then she, cause she moved to L.A. in the middle of high school too. And she was like one of those people that was born, and you was just like, "Fuck, yeah. you doing here?" Yep. And she would come back in the summers. He said, "So, and she lived in L.A. She middle middle high school. She went to L.A. and then would come back for the summer to see family and mm. stay the summer. And she already he was like, oh, it was go, it was game over then. It was just like, you know, it's well, nice knowing you. things worked out well for yeah, her. Yeah, but um, six states not bad, not good." States now. I wonder in Nevada, who the I wonder Nevada the, drops it off. California's gonna be next. I wonder who's the baddest chick from all six of those states combined. I'd like to figure that out at some point. I can't think offhand who it would be. Ooh, I would say Colorado's probably got him. It's probably got to be some in Colorado. Really, the great Pam Gris from Colorado. Ooh, well, that's a strong play. Yeah. I feel I mean, like there's got to be like somebody randomly bad from <clears throat> Kansas. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, of course. But I'm just saying, I know offhand. That, well, we'll get that Pam. Grimm Pam Grimm made the bracket, so I mean, yeah, she's, that's she's, what I'm saying. And Pam Grimm, I can believe she made the lead eight. Because Steph Curry, mama from from Virginia. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. I just wanted to make sure we need to man. We need to maybe do a power rankings of these states next. Oh, we might need to call in some of our pro athlete friends. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and some of our oh oh uh, 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 random world and travelers, musician, musicians, Musi- musicians, musicians, uh, pro athletes, and random world travelers. Travelers, there you go. <laughs> For this one. Um, that sounds like a series right the, there. Almost, Dan, we could do like a pageant. A state pageant? Yeah. Oh, man. Miss Congeniality. <laughs> <laughs> Most Miss, slept on state. Miss Fly Me the Hell Out of Here Right Now. <laughs> Don't even give me a layover so I can possibly get stuck. <laughs> uh, please fly me out state. Like where the girl wants you to fly her out because she's she like, whatever you can do. Oh, that state is like um, the, the, the states that really don't have nothing popping. Like... Like North Dakota, South Dakota. You're not going to find no chicks up there, but it's like a place that you would go to and you go back somewhere more popping. Like Louisville. Like St. Louis might be a fly me out city. I can see that. Like I, It used to not be, but it can be. Get me out of here. Yeah. Louisville. Somewhere like that where you get on a low. Yeah. We're we, we going to come up with this though for you. Iowa. Iowa, definitely. Fly me out of here. Arkansas. Definitely. Fly me out of here tonight. Yep. Tonight. <laughs> um, uh, Mississippi, Alabama. Yeah, well, we need you know how I feel about that. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need to be there anyway. Right, but why are you there in the first? Why place? am I here meeting you? Meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, R. Kelly is suffering from health issues and is looking for a release from jail. And he's also mad because both his girlfriends can't visit him at the same time. Oh, I forgot to add that as a part of the Christ. Um, we'll explain your are boy. We in, are we, is he literally is is he trying to do an insanity plea? Well, I'm gonna do the dumbest shit. To try to milk his, make himself look bad? I, I think or R. is Kelly, he really this crazy? I think R. Kelly saw what Antonio Brown did and said, uh, I can do that. <laughs> Just make ridiculous. Not knowing that he already did do it when he was free. And this is why you are where you are. See, Antonio Brown got fired, but he didn't technically break any laws that he's been convicted of yet. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Antonio Brown and R. Kelly might be in there together. In a minute. <laughs> we'll let that develop. Yeah. Meanwhile, R. Kelly did several things. And hasn't even been convicted for all of them yet. Yeah, and on tape. I think is he trying to take the Bill Cosby, uh, Bill Cosby method? About to die? I'm talking about the I'm talking about the. Oh, I ain't doing too great. They're not taking care of me. Well, they said Bill Cosby's doing his best help now. Help well, me. but not at first. No, at first, no. He was like, yeah, he's all bad. He's a, 
Maybe he is. Le- yeah, maybe he is. You think Bill Callis be gonna drop a Netflix special from in jail? <laughs> actually, I'd be fucking Netflix. <laughs> no, no, I'd actually, be yo. You know what? Netflix would have too much pride to do it. You'd have to get an upstart like Apple, who's trying to get there. Like uh, BET Plus. There you go. <laughs> oh shit. I'm gonna find ways to make BET Plus matter. Cause and it's ten dollars a month too. Cause I don't think all y'all even knew BET Plus was out there. And it's ten dollars a month. Let's which just is, put your head around Which is that. absurd. <laughs> it's almost disrespectful. That's as much as I pay for Spotify. Dude, Netflix is only eleven ninety five, twelve ninety nine a month. For, you want ten? Disney Plus is gonna be six dollars. What is on the? I bet you the BET Plus app don't even work half the time. You know it's not. It's like LimeWire. <laughs> You get on there, you hope your shit's better now. You can download some shit. Right. You get BET Plus, you immediately get a virus. You'd be like, God damn. damn. I just logged in. I just logged in. And it's $10 a month. But I think they can make some decent. I think they can get 100,000 people to subscribe to BET Plus. Oh, yeah. This and that's a million dollars a month. There's going to be people that are going to do it out of out of being like, oh, I just need to support this. Yeah. But how long does that last, though? Oh. You got to have some good content on that. That that just that I just want to support this it ends real quick when people start Pretty seeing much. like what Disney Plus is doing. Watch that Disney Plus roll out. And be like, ooh, like, six dollars, and I get all that. My kids like this, and that's like their excuse. And the HBO Max roll out with the Boondocks on there for the next season, like. Oh, are they only putting that on HBO Max? It's only on HBO Max. See, here's my problem: streaming is about to be more expensive than cable. Well, they said bootlegging is increased because of all the streaming. Yeah. Because people are like, fuck it, I'm only subscribing to three, and I'm going to bootleg the rest. Right. Like, it, there's literally, it's like one show on, like, five different things that I like. Mm-hmm. But I can't watch. I'm not, like, I watched one season of uh, Titans on the DC app, and I was like, oh, this is dope. I'm not going to keep paying for this. <laughs> fuck am I paying for? Like, to read comics on TV? Well, that's supposed to, that's going to roll over to HBO Max. That. DC is. The DC app is. Well, good because so it's gonna be a part of the HBO Max. Well, but still, but then at that yeah. point, I mean, it's I'm still gonna be paying for fucking Hulu, yeah, Netflix, Hulu, and, and Spotify are together. So both right. both for one subscription. Then there's Netflix. So right now we have twenty twenty two dollars right now mm-hmm. already. All right. Yep. Um, what else is out there that I'm that's Amazon. taking money? Well, I pay for Prime once a year, but that's twelve dollars a month, yeah. technically. And you got Prime, so that's a twelve dollars a month. Yeah, so that's thirty two. That's an extra added benefit with shipping stuff too, though. So they give you the extra bit. I almost look oh, at Prime is almost looked at the, the the TV shit as extra shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You threw that in, and I yeah. just decided to take it. Um, Disney Plus would be another six seven dollars. I'm definitely getting that. I'm yeah. gonna roll that into my Hulu and get the ESPN Plus too. You can get all those. As a yeah, but see, I can't get Spotify and Hulu and ESPN Plus together, and I don't want to. You don't want to mess up that deal. You got. Yeah, I'll keep that deal. Yeah, so, I'm, gonna I mean, roll, I'm gonna roll ESPN Plus. I got ESPN Plus right now too, so that's five dollars. Okay, so you already got it. So, yeah. so I'm at thirty five dollars right now. I pay twenty dollars a month for Red Zone during football season. But that's on that's that's only four months, right? Three, four months. Well, it's still another it's bucks. still another eighty bucks. So now we had about one hundred fifteen. You had cable prices again, and I got cable. Oh, and you got cable, yeah. Because I had to watch. I, I like for all my stuff to be you in lie. one place. Yeah. Yeah, because I got cable too, so I get it. I ain't getting rid of cable. You know, I think that the cutting the cord thing is at this point it's past its use. Because you got other people like, oh, you need to get this stick, you need to get this stick. But then they man, always like, damn man, I ain't get to see it, my stick ain't working. Man, I done had so many damn sticks that done only worked half the time, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not doing that. And it seemed like it's more of a struggle to fucking get the stick to working. Right, it's not worth it. Yeah. I'm just not going through all that. I got a, I got a <laughs> Roku. I got a Roku, so I can use apps quicker. Even though I do got a lot of apps in my TV, mm-hmm. I just can use the Roku and do it real easy like that. But come on, man! Like they're about to a la carte TV out of being worth it. Yeah, I'm okay. Because I'm, I'm always want to watch ESPN and watch my sports live, and I want to watch local news if I need to, and not have <laughs> to do anything extra to to get Who's through. That, uh, live Depends live on which one you get it yeah. through. Hulu's got different because oh that's right it's different levels yeah it's like because it's like a seventy dollar level one that yeah that like shit. there's like a deluxe ass Hulu and I'm like oh cause I don't need all that I'm good just let me binge my shows yeah just let me live my best life without all this all right man so let's get into uh, what's been a uh, rather contentious news topic to develop later today uh, well, before you even get into that this. I want to give a rest in peace um, to um, the great um, uh, Lennox. From Billy, he was died in a car accident. Oh, yesterday. that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
that we got. What were your favorite moments with, with Nimbus? Um, actually, it was in a movie called Shatas. If okay. anybody remember, you I ever do. seen Shatas? Yeah, <laughs> That's when you know you are certifiedly, 100%ly black I'm if you've seen Shatas. Uh, I'm only black as people uh, you know. And, as, <laughs> uh, and it was him at the end where, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it. I mean, I'm going to spoil it for y'all. It's been almost 20 years. You, yeah. The spoiler window is officially yeah, passed on that. It came out in 2003. So. Um, and he's like, why are you going to do that? He's like, why are you going to do that? Why are you going to shoot me? And then he shot his girl. He's like, not my bitch. <laughs> why are you going to do that? You're my bitch. <laughs> and he was crying. And then Lemax, everybody, his accent, they both from belly. But he's like crying about his girl getting shot <laughs> with that. And like, oh, we didn't have to do that. <laughs> They be walk making, one. Why do you have to do that walk one? They be having Jamaican dudes looking crazy as hell in the movies. Oh, dude, man. It's hilarious, man. Uh, but yeah, man. Rest in peace to that brother, man. Get died in a car accident, too, man. Do you, what are the odds that he's going to get his his uh, his face in the uh, in the in, in the Grammys when they're doing the oh, no. a- actors that have passed what about, this year? What about the BET one, though? The BET and Memorandum. Who's died? In memorandum? Yeah, who's died this year in, in, in Memorandum for BET? Ooh, we probably missed some people that died, man. Damn, so you saying that he's got a chance to get on there because we ain't had many black people die this year. Been a good year for black people staying alive, for the most part, in, in popular culture. Who's yeah. been the biggest one we had to go this year? Let's see. See, if you got to look it up, that means... Yeah, no, that's just good. That you... Let's just hope we when didn't did, uh, just... Our man Caffey died. He died last year, right? Caffey? Uh, he played for the Bulls in 97? No, 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 no. no. So <laughs> he's still out here. Uh, the actor, the brother that played uh, the... Um, he played uh, Carcetti's uh, campaign manager in The Wire. Oh, yeah, that was this last, year, last, year. Year. last year. Last year, okay. Yeah, he was, was on year. um, what you call it too? He was um, what's the uh, so the car, uh, car, how's it called? All right, so let's get into uh, news of the day. News of the day, and we'll try mm-hmm. to figure out the angle here. Yep. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because I'm sure you've gotten um, to the bottom of this, but there are a couple of offshoots of this story that <laughs> I feel like we need to discuss. Um, in the shocking news of the week, and then. I think this is like a double shock wave. I don't know. This this hit people in a lot of different ways. Um, Amber Geyer, who was the cop in Dallas that um, that 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 killed the brother down there in his home, mm-hmm. got convicted of murder. Got him. And it was like a, and it was like the biggest wow celebration I think in I've seen on social media in some time. And it's interesting to watch how reactions now happen in the social media era. It just makes me really just wish that the OJ thing could have happened during social media time. That would have been crazy. Like, yeah. Like, it would have been something else. But, um, so, you know, but then it came back again a uh, day, two later or whatever, that she only got sentenced to, she, her sentence was 10 years. And that offset a lot of people that were happy about the conviction. Mm-hmm. Saying it's not enough, it's light. It wouldn't happen to us, you know. If it she would have been another fit, what would it have looked like? So I'd like to point out a couple things about that. Number one, that's a presumption of equity. And when in what part of your black ass life have you ever been equitable in any way, shape, or form to the majority? Never. Never. So why would it start now? Like why would we? Why I, I hate that comparison. What would happen if they were this? Well, shit. <laughs> Has it ever been like that? So why do we always ask for that? Yeah. Is it just like a hope and a strike? See, for me, that feels like reaching for equality and acceptance. And I don't need nobody's equality or their acceptance. So maybe that makes me be a black sheep in how I view these things. Yeah, I mean, the 10 years thing, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I would have wanted her to get a little bit longer. I mean, that's not my decision with that. I'm surprised she got convicted, period. Shit. Period. Shit. And for me... Cause she did. She pulled the whole white girl playbook out. Oh, she did everything out. There. She pulled all the stops out. And but you know what though? They had a jury full of black folks and Latinos. They did. Yeah, they did. And, and a black judge. Yeah. And <laughs> some people were getting mad about the judge letting. Um, I forget. It was like basically a stand your ground law rule in Texas. Mm-hmm. I think that she said that can that can that can be used. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers didn't even understand and know the reason that she did that. Because I shot at my homegirl. Shout out to Jazz. Uh, that's a lawyer down in Texas. She said that was smart for that. If they couldn't use an appeal, using that as an appeal, if she gave that as an uh, up front. Mm-hmm. So she basically was setting it up where, like, they couldn't come back with an appeal. Because if she didn't say, like, hey, that can be used as a defense, then they could come with that on the back end and appeal and say, well, we want to, why, we didn't, why you didn't let that be able to use that on the first case mm-hmm. as an option. And then try to get the case thrown out. 
Exactly. So people are like, why did you? No, she was playing check chess on y'all motherfuckers thinking like, I want this shit to stick. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens, I want it to stick. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give them all the options they have, but nobody can say we didn't do this case correctly. Right. Because you know they'll come, they'll come for that. Exactly. But the motherfuckers will jump down the judge's throat because of that, but not understanding how legal shit goes. And that's another thing, man. When it comes to like, like, when you don't know shit that's going on with a certain process, just fall back. Like when Matt's talking about baseball and shit, I may be like, "Man, it's something." Like, no, no, no. But let me fall back. That's not even. Look, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a transitionally. I'm not gonna sit here and debate you back. about New York hip hop and the greatest <laughs> albums in heaven there because you gotta know your place. But the problem that's happened is, is that we read so much shit that other people don't know what they're talking about, but maybe they say it articulately enough for you to Ooh. feel like to feel like they do know what they're talking yep. about. Yep. And you're like, oh, I heard this. And then you adopt that opinion, and then that's how bullshit-ass opinions get put out there. Now, let me yes. say this, this disclaimer right quick. Mm-hmm. Yo, I... Yeah, I'm with you. I would have liked to see a little bit more than 10 years, especially when I'm pretty sure that she's not going to even have to serve that thing out. You know, but hey, first of all, good luck day one in that jail. Oh, Good luck day Please one in your believe. jail. So here's the thing I also see. And it's, a cop? And here's another thing I'm going to say, too. There's a whole lot of people they never spent a single second even in county waiting to get bailed out by the bail bondsmen that be making these things, not realizing that two weeks in jail feels like forever. And you're a cop? And you're in there with people that you probably tied up? Or you know somebody, or you came on the scene and jammed them. Like, and you, you may have a, been a wrestling cop, but you came on the scene and jammed them. When you a cop in jail in that, in a female penitentiary at that you represent all of them like listen good you luck you may not be the cop that addressed me but you represent those but guys. here's the thing for me man is, is that I understand that we angry and it's like a thing where it's like that but like I just feel like it's mad unhealthy to be praying for people to get the ultimate downfall I mean I ain't gonna front though I was laughing when they, when she got convicted though Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I sought out <laughs> I, I sought out the video because I want to see yeah, the reaction. Yeah, me too. I did too. I, was, I, I thought I was a fucked up person. I was like, no. I want to see her reaction. I want to see the reaction. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to I see. I sought it. it out. By no by no way, shape, or means am I saying that I'm like, oh man, this shouldn't have happened, or I do, or I agree with it being a light sentence or anything like that. Yeah. But the thing I'm saying is, go to a bigger point of it is with all the things that hit the news now, and I think they just get magnified and microwaved and taken to a whole nother level in social media era and in in this echo chamber that is the reaction to things that happen now. Like I feel like one eye is never grown back by taking another one. Ooh, and it's showing the hell bothers me if it appeases people to feel like somebody's getting worse off because that just goes against the sensibility I was raised with and it's an interesting thing man because I'm, I'm and I I, to, I, I kind of um, um, toy with this myself because I, I believe black people are the most forgiving people period in general um, and I think to ourselves no, I'm someone in general I think Ooh, it, it, expand on that like we just we we we're, we're more inviting of people in general more like in general we may clown somebody or something like that but if you come around and you cool we gonna fuck with you okay I don't know if, I don't think other groups of people are that inviting or cool with just bringing outsiders within their ranks I would say per se okay and and that and, and that's not even necessarily racially I mean even like culturally you know what I'm saying like even if you know somebody if it's a group of cats and they all you know hip hop dudes they ain't let they'll let somebody if you cool you know you like this shit you cool but I don't know if a country dudes like, dudes like let my black ass even if I'm coming there talking about Charlie Pride mm-hmm. and I know my shit if they like they be like I think he's a plant they, you'd have to come through for some weeks mm-hmm. and then damn they're coming to George Strait T-shirt on <laughs> like you know and the cowboy boots like I think he's for real though guys like you know like, but in general <laughs> you know you can be whoever you are and we'll accept you. As who you are, I feel more as black people. Yeah, come as you are more. Um, and I toy, I, I struggle with the idea of us being forgiving, particularly with the family, like hugging and like forgiving her. Like I can't tell nobody how to forget, like what what they need to do or what they don't do. It's just a part of me be like, damn man, why we always got to be the forgiving motherfuckers though? Like with the situation with the Charleston thing with the racist motherfucker. Like why we gotta be the people forgiving all the time? Why we always got to be the ones going to be, reach our hand out and motherfuckers don't reach their hand out for us. See, here's and I toy with that, though, because I, I can't tell nobody else 
how to live their yeah, lives and see, how to, that's how to go through is, their struggle. I'm not telling nobody. I'm not telling nobody not to feel like how you feel yeah. about it or anything like that. My big thing about it is, is that we got more shit to be worried about than what somebody give us. That's always yeah. my point. My biggest point has always been is that let that have been us. Then what would it have been? Well, what day in your life did you ever wake up and it wasn't harder for us? So that's why for my thing is I say our focus need to be greater than anybody else's because we don't got the leeway to be out here wanting for things to be some type of way or wishing that it was this or if this was us, it would be like that. Like, listen, man, like my big thing is, is that, yo, we need to stay locked in. And I feel my biggest complaint over the last three years has been that I said, man, black folks, Trump just got elected. We need to get locked in. We need mm-hmm. to be paying attention. And I feel like we've never been less focused while feeling like we locked in mm. than at any point in my life. Like we're, we're in the spaceship locked in, but ain't nobody got their they, uh, they, uh, seatbelts on. Right. Like, like we in the spaceship, like we going, but ain't nobody got their seatbelt on. What, what significant gains have we made in the last three years that's going to endure into the next decade? Like as I mean, a culture, I feel like we've gotten into chicken wars. Uh, well, yeah, we did. We did get a chicken sandwich from Popeyes for two weeks. <laughs> that was wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. I mean, that's the best thing I got right now. That's yeah. Meanwhile, a white dude lead the NFL in rushing yards. Shout out to Christian McCaffrey. Pay attention, y'all. No, oh, no but no, uh, what's called? No, um, um, we do have um, you know, a lot of the uh, prisoners getting out of jail or whatever now for uh. Because, of, but Obama did that shit too, and George Bush did it too. Yeah, so that's not there's nothing that's happened. But here's the thing: is is that George Bush did it a lot on the low. I think that what we've, I think the only thing that we've gotten better at in the last three years is is staying mad. Division. And the problem is, is that we divide against each other now. Oh, 100 percent. So if you're not aligned with one person's view, you're you part know of the problem. We've always been divided to a certain extent. It's just that now we can actually attack each other more and more. Like yeah, and that, that's real. Now that's real. Like, that's real. Like, like the nation of Islam was always just in their section. They may talk about each other a little bit here and there, but now, and and I don't want to use nation of Islam. I don't want to pick up nation of Islam with that. But I'm just saying there were groups had their different areas, and you kind of stayed in your group. Mm-hmm. And just got mad about what you thought the other group was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but then at the end of the day, but here's the thing. It. But here's the thing is, even in them times, like think about like ninety two, ninety one, and ninety two. Like it just happens like every twenty years or so. It feels like every like seventeen, twenty years or so, we get righteous. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. But like I feel like we getting righteous about getting angry. And that ain't the right thing to do. Like, I think we fed up. And I think that this fed up is boiling into a new level of awareness and this new things that happen. But it just goes back to like the thing I said about Jay-Z last month is, is that we so quick to get mad at somebody we don't think is down for the cause. Somebody get mad at me for saying this. Yeah, no, no. Somebody's going like to like turn the show like, off because no. <laughs> they're going to be like, they'll be like, the show off. they'll be like, yo, these cats are capping. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what that means, but it feels like the type of thing. Great <laughs> right, right way to use a word that you may not even. Sh- it not feels sure, like the type of thing sure that sounds like it sounds like some bullshit. Let me Google that for the Urban Dictionary. Make sure that we you're using. The term I think it means lying. Somebody told me it's lying. Oh no, cat. Okay. To to me, it should sound like you somebody that's out there bojangling or something, or you out here you're putting on. No L- lie. Listen. It means no lie. Yes, it doesn't or make for any real. sense. My thing about it is really <laughs> simple is that I just want for us to get focused because I'm scared about what's coming up next year because I feel like we're going to be so busy bickering about who is right for us and who as opposed to who's right for me as opposed to who's right for us and getting the job done mm-hmm. that you're going to be looking at four more years of the same bullshit. And I don't think that the culture can take another four years of tearing at itself like it <laughs> is right now. Yeah. So quit asking for people to Quit asking for what would happen if it was us. You know what's going to happen if it's us. We ain't never played by the same rules. But guess what we can do? We can make our own goddamn rules. We can condense yeah. our societies. We can keep sitting around sniping at each other all the time. And we can really get after it. But you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to stop majoring in minors. Like my old dude always say. Mm. Don't major in minors. It just, mean, it just means don't make small things be a big castle. You know what I mean? Don't but, make. But then someone will argue and say though they believe those are major things. But they are big things. But the way we react to them ain't. We us reacting to each other and getting angry at each other during these times is counterproductive. Mm-hmm. We need to be together. But if we get mad every time somebody says something in an echo chamber on Facebook, or somebody makes a meme, or somebody does some other bullshit, the type of shit that we make fun of yeah. on this show, <laughs> like yo, like stay focused. Don't major in minors. Stay focused. Stay locked in. 
You know what I'm saying? Yo, that shit in Dallas was not right. It wasn't right. But, hey, protect your spirit, man. And having your spirit being focused on what's, ha- what's wrong is happening to you all the time and being like, you know what I'm saying, like, fuck that, I'm going to be angry. Like, yo, anger is, a, is an emotion that eats you up. Oh, 100%. Anger is an emotion that literally science will show you that anger will kill you. Stress mm-hmm. and taking on extra stress and staying in a in a repetitive cycle of addressing stress in an unhealthy way will kill you. And I feel like it's going to impact our generation that way because we stay in. So you think that's going to be our big uh, big health hurdle? I really think it is. I really think it is because I just inundated with with, with shit. Though. I mean, just just unlike any other time before, and a lot of it comes from places that come from self serving agendas. And people just being mad, but not offering any solutions to ease that pain. And see, that's why I like, I like. That's why we want to have our show be something fun. Yeah, with the shit because everybody always getting mad about shit. Yeah, and and and, 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 and and yeah, and it's like we get and like we want our show to be fun, but we also are not never gonna not sit on it being an awareness conversation yeah, either. Well, yeah, like we're not finna sit out here and just you know what I'm saying just bullshit the time away. If it's something worth talking about, we gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna say that like, so, I mean, it's it's a hard thing for me, man, because I can see. I, I mean, I definitely don't believe that we should be harping on this for that situation. But my thing is, I don't like the the armchair or the the couch lawyering of people that know shit about fucking legal stuff. Right. Claiming that what what, what should have happened was okay uh, if you got to like that was the whole know, reason we did that Bill of Rights show to yeah, show exactly. you how fucking stupid but you sound yeah. if you don't know what you're talking and we, about and we and people said we sounded dumb as fuck yeah because we not lawyers we don't we know not shit lawyers. about the law and we're reading these things in real time like oh shit what does sound this? like <laughs> hold on what are you saying here <laughs> like we maybe we need to talk to some dub or somebody like that where like I'm because he dub might have been like yeah that was probably right what she probably would end up getting considering this situation. And it's 10 years in jail, like you said, as a cop. That ain't going to be no cake ride. Hey, I'm going to put it this way, and I hate putting this type of stuff out in the atmosphere against anybody. Good luck making it. Yeah. Good luck making it. Dude, she checking in tonight, too. Good luck. You know what? My thing is, people understand. And, I, and like you go back, I think people understand how much time is time, though. Oh. Like, 10 years is a long time. Fucking time, dude. Yeah, and when she gets out, my daughter will be getting for the graduating high school almost damn there. She'll be sixteen. Like, <laughs> like and there's people, no, gonna, there's people gonna say she ain't gonna do most of it. She'll do a year and get out. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. But ten, no, it, not not no no ten. Sent, they didn't say it's suspended. Sent, they said ten. Here's my thing. And it's you know, let's say there maybe ain't seven. nowhere for her to go. You get out. Where you going? What's gonna happen? And to because you if you get, get out early, you can't leave the state because you under fucking um. Yeah. If if you do, if you whatever time no, you got, you got to serve out. That team people understand. You have to serve your ten. You may not have to serve it in jail, but you have to serve a probation. You have to serve all that ten so, and being inside the legal system. So here's the thing that that here's here's the what somebody would say back to that that mm-hmm. I that I would say they say that it's not about the actuality of it. It's about what it represents. Right. That is a, that, that that a slap in the face. That for somebody to die to, to and then get, you only get ten years, hundred yeah, percent. Which I want hundred percent agree with that. But I my thing, get, I think she should get more. My part about Person. it is my part about where it goes wrong is, is when we like celebrate the extreme because we wrapped up in vengeance, and I don't think that no nobody getting locked up or nobody doing anything like that is going to bring anybody back or erase anything that's happened to anybody. Mm-hmm. That man dead. And like celebrating the the, the person that that oh, got. Oh, they gonna cut him a check too, though. But my thing, but my thing about it is that back. money don't mean nothing. It's not that time that lady served don't mean nothing. Don't none of that bring him back. But you know what can truly make some change about after those things is saying like, I hey, this ain't right. How the hell are we gonna put the pressure on the legislature and put it on the courts to make sure that this shit don't keep happening? Where do we make that? That's that's the type of thing I want to hear about. Yeah. I want to hear about gains, but I don't get it. Don't make me feel no better for somebody to get ten years or a hundred years. Well, I mean, I've always always un, always wanted to understand, and this was even because I love crime drama shows like you know like your Snaps and all that, and I always wonder like <laughs> you said I, I love crime drama shows like Snaps. Like snaps. <laughs> what the? Fuck? I love those like those shows are like Investigation ID. You know what I'm saying? I uh, thought you uh, was going to say, like, The Wire or New York no, Undercover, no, like, snaps. No, no, I like the real ones. You the know, I ones. like investigative journalism. Exactly. Like, like cheetahs. Right. <laughs> he said, like, cheetahs. 
that's really you know what I'm saying. That's what I'm. That's that real about. shit. Uh, but like. What? How much time is enough for you to feel good? Though I've always just wondered, and I, I don't know what it is. I've never had, like, one of my, I, think, I one of my close friends get killed, and they got thirty some years. But I was like, damn, that was still one enough. And I think if they would have said fifty, I'd have been like, that still ain't enough. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it could have been a number that would have satisfied me. Yeah, I that guess maybe sense. life. I mean, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's like he gets life. But y- your man's ain't getting his life back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't change anything. And here's my thing about it is, is that sentencing in Texas ain't going to scare another state who's like, we ain't locking up anybody. You know, like all the things with Eric Garner and things with Michael Brown and all Eric them Garner type of stuff. New York. Yeah, I mean, so, like, look at all these things that are happening. I Maybe maybe I'll put it this way, and then we turn the corner mm-hmm. to why we really brought this up. Mm-hmm. I'm not celebrating anything in a system I don't believe in to do the right thing. Period. So getting 100 years in one place don't mean nothing to me anywhere else. Place. I don't believe that there's a outcome that happens that makes me say, oh, the system is fixed. So what the fuck am I celebrating? Mm-hmm. And like, then we celebrate, we celebrate the shit when it, like, if it, she got 50 years, but that's what I'm talking about. We don't, I thought we didn't believe in the judicial system. Yeah, what's our game? What's our yeah, game? I can feel you on that. So what are we celebrating exactly? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, wow, I can't believe they did it. But the only reason I was like, wow, I can't believe they did it is because I don't believe in the system. So 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, all of it at this point, I'm playing with house money. I mean, because I don't believe in the system. So I was never, I wasn't yesterday. When I was yesterday, when I saw that or whenever it happened, I didn't celebrate. I didn't run to the internet to make some post. I wasn't one of the 41 people. Shout out to me. That posted the thing (laughs) on there. Like, so, all right, transition. Hey, y'all, we know. Like, we know. Your average person has apps that send breaking news. Your, it, it has that follows legitimate uh, news sites that post news as it happens. <laughs> Yo, I don't need everybody to be giving me the breaking news all up and down my timeline. I agree. Like, why? What, why? Why do we feel like the need to do that? I mean, I was, I was one of the, I was one of the first. You were I, celebrating. It was your celebration. It, it was a celebration, a mild celebration. It was yeah. Just, you know, I, I didn't want to just be like, you know, like breakdancing on my, on my timeline. <laughs> but this, this is a little shout out. All I said was, wow. If you would have broke that, if you would have got some breakdancing, at least you would have added some flavor to it. Because all it was was just the same picture of that ugly chick going up and yeah, down. What's so funny is one of my own boys, I'm not going to put you out there, homie, because you listen to the show. <laughs> that motherfucker said, you got that round that bitch. <laughs> like, I was like, God damn. Like, yo, like. <laughs> She owed him money, huh? Yeah, I was like, but he's over overseas too, though, so he's a little bit more detached for the situation over here. So shout out to you, man. Uh, I'm not going to put you out there. Uh, so Elliot, and the other thing, <laughs> the, the other thing that gets lost in the mix is is in the middle of all this, we locked in on the outcome. But yo, some of the most covert hating of all time emerged undercover. Because, like, I was watching the thing, and then somebody broke down to me what just happened, and I read that, and I was like, hold up, what just happened? <laughs> Tell the people what they missed so, in so the middle the, of this. Something they missed is, so, she was texting her married partner, who she's been having an affair with, nasty stuff, and she's trying to get into the apartment. Mm-hmm. Now, she's not paying attention to what the door is from because of the sexting. She's back and forth about how he wants her to break her off, everything. And she's texting him after she shot him. And calling him, he gets jammed up in all of this. His wife finds out about him cheating because he gets subpoenaed. <laughs> because he she's the last person he contacted. So she jams him up too. Bro, that's top. He's sleeping at the Red Roof Inn maybe tonight. That is top. That's top three because, jams. Yes. Because this he because he probably like, I wonder he's a cop. He had to know he's gonna get jammed up soon. He had to, he knows he's probably get jammed up soon, right? If he knew, he's like, they probably going to subpoena me these texts, right? He, I mean. You see, here's the thing that happens. Here's the thing that happens a lot is, is that, like, some of those just crazy laws. Like, she deleted a lot of text messages, too. Yeah, so, like, I was watching it on Patriot Act. Simon Nash, he's talking mm-hmm. about how crazy it is, how police training and access they had to that. Half the time, they showed the police the stuff and the evidence they got up front anyway. Like, the police officers in a lot of these cases are asked to see the evidence, even in cases they're involved in. <laughs> like, so he knew the jam was coming. And it's because this is such a high profile thing. There's no way he is going to be able to erase it. Do you think he probably got ahead of this? Like, let her know it was coming? Like, yeah, man, I've been cheating on you. Let's stop this case from the drop. Had to. 
But imagine having to take it to her like that. Imagine. It, it, is, it is everybody's trying to find out. Like you sitting there. They, like, they asking me to get on the stand. Like <laughs> this is and like some, re, and they're gonna read my text messages. This back is like some her Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harden level bullshit. Like this just messed up the whole situation. Like, hey, this chick is this chick is literally like bottom three chicks of all time. Like the chick that got my man to cut his hair off in the Bible, she's way down there. Samson, Delilah. Del- yeah. Delilah sucks. Yeah. She's way down there. And then like, shit, I don't know. All the all the Kardashians? Like yeah. all of them? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. Bottom three. All of them. We'll give them like a crew vote. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is a jam up, man. <laughs> Like he was, he probably was like. How do you hate in the middle of a murder? Like you've caused so much. She's caused more devastation. I never in life ain't seen anybody pull out the double play of killing somebody and ruining a marriage at the exact same time, but in different people. Is that a different like you situation. ruin you a marriage, marriage because you kill one of them? Yes, mates. if you ruin the marriage if you kill somebody, like no, yeah, obviously. <laughs> But to catch another dude, like this dude caught a stray. Hundred percent caught a stray. He might as well been in the room, <laughs> right? <laughs> the way it was, because and I don't know his situation, so he may have been totally not, and you know, just good to go. But I'm just saying, his wife. They said his wife didn't know, and he had been, she had been cheating with him for a while, over a year. Jam. She's caused more devastation. Because they had to bring out all the text messages over the year. Think about that. Like they put up how many text messages they had back and forth over a year. And the contents of nudes, everything. I don't want hers. No, no, no. I'm talking about. I'm talking about for a general person having a situation where you like, you got to think about all the stuff people go, do it within a couple's situation. I, I'm aware. What if he was gangster enough to have a burner phone though? <laughs> and she didn't know about. She didn't know. And he didn't get. He didn't necessarily have to get jammed up. He just had to come in for a testimony and get right out. Listen, just but remember, they dropped his name though. Just remember, we talked about this before that we mm-hmm. can turn the corner to the next segment. Mm-hmm. When you get jammed, don't say my name. name. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Especially in front of a grand jury. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey man, let's go on over to this week in racism. If you can imagine, we still have this week yeah, in racism. Not all this. So it's let's get over to America's favorite segment this week in, in racism. racism. Speaking of hating, <laughs> this is now this is something to get satisfied about. Yeah, right this here, satisfa- this is real satisfaction. Yeah. So, teacher down in Double Texas. Double satisfaction too was hers. Then I don't want to dismiss that. Situation. I don't want to. Yeah. I, you know, disclaimer, disclaimer, yeah. culture. Uh, so there's a teacher down in Texas, if you can imagine. Once again, Texas, just. Hey man, Texas is about that life, baby. So there's a teacher that got fired this week over tweeting Donald Trump to ask him to remove the immigrants. But not just any immigrants, no. These immigrants were students in her class at oh, her wow, job. Really? That, 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 wow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, boy. She Shout out to her. So she was a high school English teacher in Fort Worth, Texas, Georgia Clark. If you want oh, this is all the same area. So Dallas, Fort Worth area is having a, a time right now. That's why they didn't make the playoffs. But um, ooh, damn, years ago. Dallas, but, th- th- Dallas is re- they've been hurt about that man. But uh, they can't believe Houston made it. She asked President Trump to get rid of undocumented in- immigrants, people that she believed were undocumented immigrants, in her in her class, in public tweets that she thought were private messages to the president. So she thought she was DMing the president. The direct, like she had a direct path to talk to the president. calls back to the infamous Ray Allen incident. <laughs> Shout out to you. You used the one to introduce that to us, wasn't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, Ray Allen, and look, if you Google that people, yeah, that episode, Google. no, that episode of that podcast is like the first thing you find. So Ray Allen has scrubbed everybody but us. Yeah, you're welcome, Ray. <laughs> Ray has got to be like, who is these scenario motherfuckers? So the Fort Worth uh, the school district voted to unceremoniously terminate her contract immediately um, at, after she had suspended Twitter activity after this whole thing. Said 14 people at the school board meeting stood up like, oh, no, this ain't going to work. Ooh. Man, please. Listen, um, what? 
Continue with the story. No, she just said she'd been in the district since 98. Um, said all that. Her said her school district was loaded with undocumented students from Mexico and that our high school had been taken over by them. Taken over? People going to high school. <laughs> they just trying to get education. Yo, man, that'd be the problem with these teachers. They'd be running around racist as hell and they'd be scared of their students and they don't be giving a quality education. Like, yeah, it's a real thing. There's a lot of dope teachers out mm-hmm. there, but there's a whole lot of just terrible ass people that just got in the profession. And it's scared of the people that they teach. What, they, what is the old saying? Like, if you can't do something else, they teach? What well, is if it? you can't do, you teach, which, yeah. is, a, which is a terrible, which yeah, is a, a terrible. terrible, terrible way to put it. Because <laughs> most people that do wouldn't be able to do without somebody showing them the way to do it. Exactly. You know, so you so. if you didn't have nobody putting you on game, you would have been. But, you know, hey, it's a thing where you're talking about vetting racists straight into school. <laughs> We're talking about them. But that's, isn't that, that's kind of hard to do, vetting a racist, though. No, you can hide that. But I'm just talking about we, we straight up is just letting them in the building. and do, that's, why, hey, that's why I'm always happy when I see people that appear like the other people teaching those people. I like when I go into a class and there's a black teacher teaching black students. Oh, it's, you it's probably, you're probably you going to get some nuance. That you probably wouldn't have got anywhere else, 100%. But, and it takes me back to another thing. Actually, we can turn the corner. That, that's been this week in racism. <laughs> Enjoy, but ain't that I saw my homeboy was putting up a status on Facebook not too long ago saying that uh, what was the first grade you were in when you had a black teacher, and like yo, it was mad people that was like getting in the middle school without having a black teacher. I was like, how? Damn. I'm like, how? High school, middle school. I'm like, Damn. how I many things? Yes. Hell yeah. I had, I had, let's see, I had second grade, third grade, fourth grade, for show. Uh, black teacher, black music teacher during that time, Is black it kind gym of, teacher. You think if your fourth and fifth grade teacher was the, same, was the same teacher and you thought that she was actually white, though, <laughs> but she was black because she acted white? I think my, my fifth grade teacher was kind of, was like, was. was no, was, she was a straight up Uncle Tom, Uncle was, Tom, a Tom woman. Was hella woke. I think my fifth grade teacher was oh, hella so woke. I had the total opposite. Yeah. Uh, shout out to you, Ms. Anderson. <laughs> No, but I had all of that. And my first grade teacher was dope as hell, but her husband was a doctor, and I think she just was like, I don't have to teach. <laughs> and she stopped teaching? Yeah. Oh, word. So she, she, oh, she was like, I'm out. Yeah, he was straight up like a surgeon. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm, like I'm out of here. I'm not doing, <laughs> I'm, I'm, doing I'm this not shit. working. This like, my like, this she was good, too. Like, she has been dope at it, but it was like, I don't was need it, to do it, this. Was it too many rowdy kids, or you think she just... No, nah, she just straight up didn't have to do it no more. Oh. Shout out to Miss Watchmaker. <laughs> Damn, she sounded like a, yeah, she was dope. She was young. She was like twenty, like four or twenty five oh, or something like that like, too. Ah, I worked for a couple she, years. She's like, I'm good. I'm out of here. But um, but uh, but yeah. So it was. At least I think she was. How fuck? How old do I know people was? I was like right. seven. But right. I mean, she was, she was she was older than me. Yeah. I mean, but you know, but um, but yeah, but yeah. I think it's important. I think it's important that this like stories like this double down on me and why it's like important to like when you. Take your kids to school. Mm-hmm. Look at who's teaching them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you can get into that dope school district and you can do all that yeah. stuff. And you'll but be in. Who's teaching them? Yeah, you'll be in a dope, so called dope school district, but they out there learning nothing about themselves. And my thing is, I think, and this is a whole nother, like issue that I have in general with us, particularly black people, um, when it comes to. We get caught up way too much in elementary education. Like, I get it. Like, you want your kid to be in a dope school, in a dope uh, situation. But, yo, your kid, what kindergarten your kid, your kindergarten goes to is not going to affect their lives. It's more important <laughs> that they go to kindergarten yeah. and that they go to pre-kindergarten. Yeah. Because there's, like, 300% higher rate of getting into college if you go to pre-K because you've got a head start on right. education already. Th- just because you go to a dope kindergarten and choose your nice district doesn't mean you're going to be dope. Yeah. Like I mean, you could be in a, a decent school district. Now, you, as you get older, then you can decide better. But don't be getting stressed out with your kids over them not being in a school, your school district in first grade. Or yeah. being in the best school district in first grade. Come on, man. It's yeah, first grade. It, it's, a, it, it's a real thing, man. And it's like, you know, it's like we got to – let's just keep perce- – I mean, I mean, I'm definitely not telling nobody to raise their kids. Do yeah, it. yeah, no. I mean, I'm not telling you how to raise you, your do kids what either. you want to do, but I'm just but saying. I'm, I, but I'm saying at the same time, like – Let's pay attention to what's really a case. Yeah, let's, let's, let's fall back a little bit on that. Hi, man. Topic of the night, man. Let's get to the main scenario. Snitching. After all of this stuff. Yeah, we, we, you, you th- y'all thought we was going to get this because it's Kasha 6 9 shit, huh? Was not going to let that pass. Too we, much good shit. We let Antonio Brown pass. We decided not to do yeah, it. Yeah, and then his stuff got real weird. And it got to the point where, where it's it not funny. Like, it's not even funny. It's like, this isn't no funny. <laughs> yeah, this is not funny. This is done. 
Like, yeah. It would have been nice. You're up here texting people that are accusing you of a sexual assault. Yeah, I'm good. You're a thousand. You're a full blown creep. You're yeah, it's like the worst. I, I do want to do a little bit of a, a victory lap on this, um, on this Antonio Brown thing. People last year were saying I was shit on Antonio Brown a little bit too much. I, I think would like that, to take a. Vi- I would like to take a small victory lap. I think that if he would have stopped at getting the hell out of Oakland, <laughs> then 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 I wouldn't have had a victory lap. You said I'd have been cool with it. <laughs> but when your dumb ass start texting people. In a group text message too. He got so mad that Bob Kraft fired him. Bill Belichick didn't even have anything to do with it. He got oh fired word! He went. Top. He was like, "I got this. Yeah, don't worry about and this." And like as I sit here and I talk to more and more people that have been in the league mm-hmm. and people that even in other leagues, yeah, that the, I didn't know a little bit that are like, "I don't understand this." Like, like what is he doing? Like this doesn't make any sense. Like what's happening right now? Like you could debate the Le'Veon. Bell thing last year. Yeah. Melvin Gordon made absolutely no sense. He just had to bend the knee and come back to work. <laughs> um, and Ezekiel Elliott made great sense. But what Antonio Brown did, I was just like, what are, what are you, you doing? You have 30 million guaranteed already, bro. But I'm not talking about it. We but they also, but, but before we even get, they said that he would just randomly text people that he meets. Yeah. Like they're cool. Yeah. Like I've read this. Like, like if you got cool with him and he came in a scenario, he might just text Matt, you, Matt, like, Hey man, I how many bitches you fucked? Yeah. You be like, whoa, dude! Like you just came on my show like two like, times. First of all, I don't know. Second of <laughs> all, I can't be putting this in text. Next, number three, I barely know you, and why are you why are you having this discussion with me? Yeah. They said he would be like, yeah, I fucked like five bitches last week. He'd be like, okay, that's nice, man. Like, cool. My bro. own friends don't even tell me that. I'd be like, cool, bro. <laughs> I can't live that life. My own friends don't even tell me shit like that. Why do I even accept that from you? Yeah, I don't want to talk to you about that, Antonio Brown. Yeah. Meanwhile. Uh, snitching. Let's get into snitching it. Snitching season is here. So, if this brings us, I mean, we could go back into the Tanashi thing. Um, Tanashi? You call him Tanashi yes, Takashi? I call him. I call him out of his name. <laughs> Tanashi. Anybody, so, he's the singer Tanashi. Anybody <laughs> that sings that many things, you don't say his name the right way. He's Tanashi. Tanashi. You got to make it a little softer. Okay. Tanashi. Say it with say it. Yeah, like Tanashi. Say, damn it. That is too close to the singer. She ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, she ain't did nothing. She can't take catch no straight bulls. Right. Teriyaki. All right. We'll call him Teriyaki uh ninety six. No, I like teriyaki. Yeah, damn, teriyaki. so okay, we can't do that. All right, Takashi. Takashi. We'll call him what he is. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. Yeah. Um everybody knows the details of this by now. We don't need to rehash yeah, that. Nothing. But what it got us thinking about was some of just the most egregious snitching that we might have ever seen, like in our lives. And then it doesn't have to be court wise. It could yeah, be just anything. Just anything you might have seen, like Everybody Kobe Bryant every- is off the top. Yes, <laughs> I'm just going to give you guys an example. Absolutely. That's like it's like when you take the uh, you take the SAT and they give you an example yeah. of what uh, how this is going to go. That's oh, your first like one. Kobe Bryant, real quick. When we talk about snitching. We mm-hmm. talk, have you heard the Dame Lillard and the Shaq tracks? Yes, I have. Let's touch on that in a yes, second. I- we will. We'll touch on that on the way out the door. I just want to make sure right. we didn't forget about yes. that. But uh, so I've seen some egregious snitching in my life, like some some terrible snitching, like mm-hmm. things where you just looking. You'd be looking like, damn. Like, you really did that? Like that? Damn. Like, uh, Larry Johnson did it on Twitter the other day when he was talking about. Yeah, that, and then he's talking about, like, that. I, he's talking about, I fuck such and such, I fuck such and such. He said, I fuck with so many bitches, you think I'm going to And then he named them. And then he started naming them. See, that's when snitching <laughs> crosses the line. You can reference a situation that maybe you shouldn't have brought up. And you shouldn't even be referencing that for real either. Exactly. But I, I'll let you give a pass. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like if you reference a situation, it's kind of like in bad taste. You'd be like, all right, bro, chill out. But then when you get to the point where you'd be like, because then it, uh, and you in there like WeeBay when he was taking all them charges. <laughs> but I did that. But ain't, but ain't nobody offered you a deal to do it. You just doing it because you like talking. That's a problem. Yeah, I agree. And I like agree. the worst snitches are the ones that just be talking out loud about like whatever, and you be listening, and you be like, "Damn, why are you talking about this? Why am I privy to this information?" Like everybody got like that friend to talk too much about their dating life. Yes. And then like the yes. person come around, and you be like, "Oh, the person that they're dating." Yeah. Oh yeah. And you be like, "Damn, man, I know too much about you, bro." <laughs> or like, "Damn, this chick is like that." Like. And then it's just and it just kind of that's why I try to keep my friends out of my shit in general, mm-hmm. man. Just because I don't want to taint them on their image in general for somebody in general, I got regardless through, of what I'm going through. I got through years, years <laughs> of relationship that didn't have to be talked about. <laughs> I ain't I even used years. to talking about my relationship yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, but let's just do some snitches, man. Uh, our snitching stories. Yeah, some great snitching stories of all time. Um, I had a homeboy. That was trying to holler at a girl, and 
back-endedly snitched on one of our other homeboys by saying, well, I mean, you could come through. That's where uh, such and such be having his girls come through anyway. Oh. <laughs> Not knowing that that girl was cool with two of his other girls. Damn, blowing the scene up for real. Blew it up. Then they, no, they ran, they did a spot, they did a uh, goddamn dragnet on his ass. They both showed up at the, uh, the uh, let, let's call this place the White House. Mm. Um, both showed up there and said, uh, both showed up there at the same time. Mm. And? I mean, he had to just dip out, He'd leave from his own home. That's, that's your best option, people. If you get jammed up, leave the facilities. Because it's nothing, nothing that's away. going to happen there is going to remedy anything. You might as well get away and take on each individual uh, assailant individually. <laughs> yeah, just leave. Yeah. Just get out of Dodge. Yeah, and then you can fight, you can fight one-on-one. Mm-hmm. It's like getting jumped. Mm-hmm. Like if You, you might got be that, able to save it. Yeah, you can save maybe one of these situations. Maybe both. But trying to attack them together? No, man. You ain't going to be able to do that. It's not going to work. Never. Just leave. It's not ever going to work out that way. Never. So um, snitching, what do you got? Yeah, let's see, man. I've seen a few of them. So I had a homeboy... Man, I had a homeboy that snitched on himself by being in public too much, man. With, so his, with he, his new piece? No, with his same time piece. So it was like a brother wearing two watches at the same time. Oh, he forgot to check both of them. Hold so, on. Oh, so he was dating somebody this two was, people. This was sloppy pimping, though. This was sloppy macking. So okay. His, so his one girl was in town, and he ain't know it, and he was out on the uh, porch talking with the other one. Like on the like a real porch? Yeah. Like, like his, and she drove by. So this was a pop-up. While he was in front of the house talking to the, so other he couldn't one. have said I wasn't there, and she called or he did knock on the door or something. Yeah, he, he couldn't. He couldn't. Lie he couldn't play it off. He said. couldn't lie on himself. Oh, he got. He, he, However, that, that's getting caught up. You snitched on yourself when you answered the phone and said you wasn't there. Oh, okay. Because I was like, that's just getting, that's getting just jammed up. up. You just got but jammed you snitched up. Snitched on yourself when you got pulled up and you wasn't there. You said you was hollering at your friend, and then your girl walk roll up in front of you while you hollering at your friend, but your friend is your girl too. <laughs> Did he get out of this jam? No, 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 no. Both of them gone. Let me. Both of them. Did I, I, think he he keep, I think he got to keep one on, on on informal terms for some years. The other one actually. The other one actually left and started rocking with his homeboy. Oh snap! Was this when we were adults or this is high school? College. Ooh. Like in between. So yes. <laughs> so was it was it, like high college. It was like adult high school. Which is what college like is. Like 1920? <laughs> this is like adult high Was this his homeboy homeboy or was this like? It was this guy. Ooh. Did that friendship end? Not really because there was a turnaround from some other stuff that happened. I had to tell you about that. So oh, so he it was get back for something he did to him? Yeah. Oh, so he he took that L as like a man like, you got me back. It was like a, it was like a, okay, everything's on the up and up now. <laughs> we, we even. Yeah. We even. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, he got jammed up on the porch. Yeah, on the curb. Oh, he was standing on the curb. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is this is pre cell phone. Mm. Like where was cell phone pretty no, pr- cell phones were. Okay, thing. she called him. Obviously, she called yeah. him while he was standing out there. The posted up. Damn. Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah. Um, my next jam up. Um, oh, let, me, let me pull it up real quick. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> um, my next jam up is actually this is a uh, celebrity wise, <laughs> and this is Jermaine Jackson. Uh oh. He had to get involved here. Um, Jermaine Jackson uh, snitched on his own brother. Came over his brother's wife's house. If everybody doesn't know the full story, when I talk about how he took his brother's girl, he basically came over, told on Marlon's, told Marlon's girlfriend at the time, she, he never married her, that he was cheating on her. And this is what you, you could do to find out where he is and why and how. You the worst brother of all time. And then... Helped her find out where he was, then came back and smashed basically, and got and took her. Yeah, <laughs> now y'all see why Jermaine Jackson is a despicable motherfucker. <laughs> like snitching, he's still like on, he snitched, and it took you. He he's still on your. It's like the snitch when they got the snitch, and then he land in the back, went in the car, and he's like, "No, you gotta make a left. So you gotta make a right. There they go, right there. He in the red hat." He still is on your. He's still on your list of uh, top five interviews, though. Hundred percent. Okay. Cause I'm gonna bring all this up. Okay, I got you. He might want to fight me, though. Know? Yeah, he will. Um, <laughs> so one of the other great lies of all time, obviously, is like Watergate. <laughs> That's a great. I mean, OJ. 
That's like maybe the worst ca- caught up moment of all time. But did he get sni- who snitched on him though? He ain't gotta get snitched on and get caught up. Oh, okay. Ron Goldman caught the bad part of that deal. Yeah. Yeah. Some people said Ron Goldman was gay though. That he was. But I like the story that he was over there kicking in with her. That sounds so much better. That sounds way more play. I don't yeah. want to I don't wanna besmudge his legacy by saying no. he was just wrong place, wrong well, he was right. wrong place, wrong he, time. He definitely was at wrong place, wrong time. But smashing at the wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> Cause they said he's all in the robe and shit. Jay Z gotta be in caught up legends though. You got a whole song made out of them, even though the conspiracy theory that that didn't really happen. happen. I'm going with the conspiracy theory. I'm, it, it's it's seeming like that's like likely more. Doesn't it seem like that? Uh, I don't know, man. Even though she made him go on tour Jay-Z with her for like two years, the type of cat to let you drag his name. And first of all, Jay Z don't need no cash ploy to get to move no albums. Beyonce don't need no help moving no albums. But that Lemonade album did give her a different cachet, though. I get it. It can extend your career though, because I that extended her career. I don't feel uh, her career wasn't at risk. No, 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 but I'm saying, but it gave you people more something to... I just feel like Jay-Z ain't the type of cat to let you drag his name willingly. Right, I know, I get you. I'm you with you. Remember all the things they were saying about how Rockefeller was just running up on cats and, like, taking yeah. it down. Jay-Z wasn't letting... Uh, yeah. And on top of that, Beyonce made him go on tour with her for, like, two years straight. Because mm-hmm. she didn't trust him being by himself. Right. He couldn't even live his regular play of life. No, I'm, was, was, was Beyonce at the meeting with uh, Goodell? Probably. In the hallway, like, sitting there in the hallway, you like... can't even kick with Roger Goodell. <laughs> Can't he go to a business meeting? Beyonce sitting there. There's some, there's some, there's a few jams I've thought about that are confidentiality issues. Yeah, they yeah, they, I thought of some though. I was they like, can't, they can't happen. Yeah, it's just. Have you been? Uh, I mean, we've been. Well, have you been snitched on? No, no, no. I'm I trying to think. Know. I don't think like. I don't think nobody. I'm not gonna like say like there's some air about me where you don't want to do that. Yeah, but I just don't but, think I. I just don't think I just haven't had the. And I'm sure a lot of people haven't been snitched on. If you snitched on me, people are gonna know about it. Yeah. Matt did something crazy to that boy. I don't know what happened. He was just ready when he showed up. Yeah, no, I've been I've been snitched on. Like he walked up in Club Seven and just smashed Club a seven. and just smashed a Stella over his Rest head. Rest in peace to Club Seven. All right, <laughs> Club Seven. Um let's go uh that's we got the uh, well, that's our topic tonight. But let's fall back. What were we uh, hold on, before we close yeah. the topic tonight, I wanna hear some of the great snitching caught up stories that people have ever heard. Oh yes, email I us or uh, voicemail us those. Down. And send us some of the great ones you know from all time, some of the ones we might have missed, some of the great ones from TV. Send me some Your best ones. You and now, hold on. I'm going to give you all the voicemail number directly. I know we don't have them in the notes. But you may be listening and don't have time to go into the notes. I'm going to give them to you direct, the voicemail number directly. The voicemail no- box is 641-715-3900. And then you punch in an extension 769558. We would love to hear some stories. This is one that, like, we really want y'all. Not even just email. If y'all can give us the voicemail on this one, I think it'd be even greater. Um, and we want to hear your stories of snitching. Uh, 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 y- y- and if you snitched yourself, be, be honest about you snitched. Tell the um, truth. Yeah, tell the truth. Um, or tell the truth. Um, and let us know on that. But let, you, want to, we want to, you want to flow back to something else earlier. Yeah, quick. man. So real quick before we wrap this mm-hmm. up, man. Dame Shack. Yes. Yo man, play a Dame? little bit. Play yeah, a yeah. little bit of that. Shack. We go. We just go. Uh, play we, a little bit of we, that. Shack. I don't think we can. You can play that Shaq. Yeah, it's got too much of the uh, that. Uh, it's not an original beat that's got in the background. They gonna they gonna flag us. Oh, that's what I'm saying. They gonna flag us because that beat. Is Ten that, seconds um, of it. That's that uh, bitch please beat, isn't it? I no, yeah, this bitch, please yeah, be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they're going to flag us. Okay, right. <laughs> we could get 15 seconds. Yeah, we can do that. 15 seconds. Okay, all right, we're going to get 15 seconds of the shack. Yeah, what's wrong with these little cats? I can tell they little, listen to they little raps. Always bragging about they little max contract. They ain't got a little money when it comes to shack. You see this flow, got a- All right, Diesel. Diesel is definitely the best rap basketball, or rap, rap athlete ever. Legacy wise, yes, Dame is on his heels though. Dame is coming. Dame is coming. Let me let y'all hear the Dame version. Fifteen seconds only, so y'all go listen to the rest of y'all stuff. We just trying to give you a preview. No, cause he bought the copies. Should have just passed me the torch. I got no remorse. I beat him like Rocky. I feel the tank up with Diesel. You jealous of me and I see you. Cause on his day, originals just can't fuck with this sequel. I'm um, new school, got new hits. Space Jam, not blue chips. Hangman, yo. All right. You got Dame versus Shaq. I'm going with Dame. Oh, I'm with Dame all day. Dame was actually cutting them low. Yeah. I felt like Dame could have got more savage if he wanted to. It seemed like he... Look, Shaq was like on some like... 
I'm just going to talk about you kind of comically. Mm-hmm. Dame started talking about you personally. Yes. Well, you know what, though? But Dame should have took what Shaq was talking about personally, though. He's talking about he don't stack up to his peers. Yeah. And you yeah. know, talk, but no, but he was talking about like his personal life though. Like, talking, talking, talking. I heard you be paying them off. Remember, he said some of his line, like, I heard you be paying them off. <laughs> and he told Shaq, Yeah, you date broke hoes. I was like, Oof, Ooh. oof. Then he said, he, You heard a line about hoops in there? Yes, he was like, The only hoops you shooting is something he said. I was like, Woo, yeah, Dame came for his soul as much as you can come for a cat. Only so. there, the Shaq's got, do you think that Dame is it at the wrong time to be a, a good rap? But, Dave was trying to talk about how Shaq can't earn his titles when he don't have any titles. Himself. Right, he summed up with Kobe. Said Kobe got you all. Yeah, he said Kobe, Kobe and then Dwayne Wade. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you can't talk about titles, man. You can't even get past to the conference finals. He has made the conference finals. You can't get past. Oh, past conference finals. Okay, yeah. And he probably won't. That's the sad part. Well, no, the Portland Trailblazers. No, aren't he's going never. To the NBA he's got to go. Now, if he goes to another team, then we could talk about something else. But as long as he's a Portland Trailblazer, he'll never make the finals. He said he ain't doing it. He's now. not gonna leave Portland. We'll see. That career goes. Uh, down. we'll see. How old is Dame? Twenty eight, maybe twenty nine. Somewhere in there. Let, let's see. Only thirty three, and <laughs> and uh, he Portland only got maybe Portland keep guapping him off like they are right now. I wouldn't leave either. They gave him that yeah, check. Yeah, but look, look what Car- look what Carmelo Anthony. The the tale of Carmelo Anthony is a, is a um, it's a a a a tell tale as they would say a a a, a tale of. I'm trying to think of the words here. Um. Like a cautionary tale <laughs> of going after that check for your whole career. Hey, well, Dame just with the picture, he put a Shaq on the front of that. Yeah. He came with that thunder. But Shaq, but Shaq also had the op- – Shaq had the opportunity to be around where hip-hop was kind of more pure. Mm-hmm. So he got to be around the biggies. He had the songs with Nas and shit like that. And then Dame told him he was rapping with old heads. <sighs> That's not a good look because he had a Jay-Z song with Jay-Z too. Mm-hmm. Shaq's got some albums on the low. Oh, Shaq drops. That some third cuts. Uh, Shaq album was pretty raw. Shaq that case out the realm cuts. was a pretty pretty. Shaq dumb. drops some cuts. Yeah, you can't hate. You yeah, can't, you can't, can't. You can't hate on what Shaq. Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, I know I got skills. Like, do remember when that came out? We was like, wow, this dude is like for real, for real. And actually, first we thought it was a joke on Fushnikins though. Uh, uh, can we rock? What's up, Doc? We was like, okay, this is kind of silly. I feel like though, from flow to flow status, they ain't better though. I agree. Shaq's got the older style, though. Yeah. Well, He's got an older style. Dame's got – it's basically the Betamax versus uh, – uh, not Betamax. It's kind of putting Shaq in a bag. You'd say, damn, it's, was you on the, the track, too? The DVD versus digital streaming. Because Dame is going to be able to come with the new shit immediately. Mm-hmm. Shaq's got to sit there and write it, get him an old school beat. You know what I'm saying? Go fucking sell some Papa John's yeah, exactly. in between. <laughs> and Dame has got that streaming. He, he got the studio in the crib. You know, he probably got some producers sending them beats all the time. You know, I be having an up and down relationship with Shaq, so yeah. Oh, we all do. You know, he's also a cop. There we go. Enough he's said. A cop that bought in the Papa Johns and is in commercials now. And be doing podcasts with them old bullshit ass host. He got boys down there and be apologizing, capping and stuff. I be like, mm. and you using the cap correctly now. Look at you using it in a sentence. <laughs> Yeah, using it correctly in the I sentence. I did use it in the sentence. I just got five years younger. Dang, man. How many times can you use no cap like before you I've get never like, said no cap, though. I've never said no cap. Because you said you just said no cap earlier. No, I said cap in. Yeah, but you said no cap earlier, though. You said like the kids said no cap. No, like they said it, but yeah. I got to say it in a whole Oh, you said it in a real myself. sense for yeah. you, though. Okay. Yeah. But you said cap, which is a lie. Yeah. Which is... I, where did they get... Where did that... No Shout clue. out to no clue. okay. That, we need to do a show with like somebody that's like twenty one day to catch us up on all this. Like stuff. how the slang came about. Help us out. We don't understand what's going. Like, on. Like thought that hoe over there. I get that from the acronym, but where did that come from? Who said it? Yeah. What region did it come from? Well, you know, you got a lot of people that's like on their brink of getting old. That's like twenty nine, and they holding on to it. They and that, those are people stuff. I don't trust though. Because th- those are people that I don't trust. The reason I don't trust them is because they don't want to really accept who they are. Mm. And I've been there. And I had to say, I was like, man, I'm going to be 30 about this motherfucker. What was the moment you realized you was old? What was the one thing that happened when you realized that you was old? Uh, from throwing parties when I didn't know half the people there. Mm-hmm. And not necessarily I had to know everybody there, but you had known them. Like, oh, not know them, but you've seen them maybe. Or you 
could tell that they're your age. See, like for me, I started seeing like all those like the day party pictures, and I was like, who the hell are these people? Yeah, yeah. Because before you'd be like, okay, I know maybe seventy percent of the people I've seen them before. And I realized that I don't know nobody in these, in these pictures because the people that I hang out with are actually like the type of parents to stay home and raise their kids, not the ones that go to day parties and like leave their kids in the car. <laughs> I leave their kids in the car. <laughs> well, they won't be in here in a minute. I'm gonna roll the windows down. I got you some. I got you some. I uh, got you the double down. Got him from a KFC. Ca- got him white castles and a beer. <laughs> Sit in the car. It's fruity too. Give you a little buzz. Uh, but make sure y'all give us some voicemails. But emails is always straight olc at gmail.com. We got some dope stuff coming up soon for y'all. Our long delayed hundred show is yeah, coming, coming up, up soon up. too. Uh, the CPT hundred. CPT hundred. You'll learn about that more as we come up on that. <laughs> and why is the CPT hundred? Special guest. Yes, galore. Over, special yeah. guest galore for the hundred. Yeah, we might. We gonna do that one on video. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I'll just voicemails. Hit us up on that voicemail with your story of getting. Of getting no no just a story of snitching it can be popular it could be Great personal snitching. whatever anything let us know and let us know Snitch uh, on uh, yourself, uh, somebody we on gave you. y'all extra long episode this week since we've been gone so we'll holler peace.